to another episode of Dork Tales. This is It's Always Magical in Fandelia. I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly, and joining me today are three out of the four members of our beloved party. Why don't we introduce ourselves with uh, the one with the dog in it? <laughs> uh, my name is Hayden Davio. I'm a voiceover actress for Funimation and a bunch of other things, and I'm going to be playing Galatea Brookball, the gnome barbarian, and I have a visitor. <laughs> All right, uh, let's start with uh, the blue-haired one. Hi, I'm Christine. I am nothing fun like a voice actor, but I am playing Coralyn Jade Fist, our half-orc monk. And finally, the orangest one. I am the orangest one, and therefore the most powerful. That's true. Uh, I guess my tag is Bunny Hearted. If you see me in chat, say hello. I've got several names, depending where you know me from. But today I am playing Cheesy Bree, a totally normal human who is definitely not a furbolg, and that is only occasionally in disguise. And in real life, I'm a professional crime aficionado. All right. And of course, uh, in the right corner, you can see that uh, Obsidia, uh, Natasha, is on vacation today, as far as we know. Um, <laughs> but it's a holiday, so that makes sense that people get mm -hmm. busy. All right. So why don't we just jump right into things? Now, it's later that night, down in the Absent Goose pub. You're all having your... It's not your third round of the night. Uh, your... This is your fourth set of rounds for the night, we'll say. You know, we'll keep in tune with the story that way. It's nice. Your fourth round for the night, and the bartender serves up, finishes polishing the bar after a, um, a drinking contest ended with uh, a bit of a spat between a pair of goblinoids. Uh, who have since decided to move to the corner and kiss it out. Um, and as she's polishing the bar, she shoots you another look, clopping over on her satyr hooves. So, where's your little friend? Oh, no. She might have exploded again? We're not really sure. I don't know, she may have had a bit too much. She doesn't handle her alcohol great. And she pretends to. But... Yeah. Hmm. Point of pride, so don't mention it to her if you see her. But yeah. that's probably she probably it's rolled under a counter somewhere. Tired. Too many. So we should definitely go with the explosion one when we're telling people about it. But it's honestly, yeah, just, uh, explosion of sparkles. She's okay. too determined oh. to have a full-sized pint, I think. Yeah. But you're good for her tab. <sighs> sure. Yeah, yeah. You take it. You, you take. Me? Of course, I'm gonna take the. T I'm gonna take the tab. Oh no, no! I mean, <laughs> cheesy break cover it. Oh. She holds out her hand to you, cheesy. I will give her gold and mumble something about it certainly being church funds. Gotta use it for something. Church funds? Oh, you know, just in case you wanted to spend it on something frivolous, make sure you spend it on something important if I'm paying for someone else's beer. Aren't you a cleric of the seer? Like, yeah. So I should take it down to the toy shop on the corner. Never mind. It's fine. Yeah, it's uh, Oh, they're closed already, but take it down tomorrow. I yep. might see you there. Fair enough. Well, um... Night's getting a little long. How are you all doing? Another round? <laughs> yes! Yeah! Where does oh, that gosh, dog yes. keep coming from? Oh, he's right! My, my, my dial will... <laughs> okay, you probably have a story about how you got that dire wolf. Uh, well... What's his name? He's cute! About the same, same size as me. Uh, he, he's got quite the mouth on him. But uh -huh. you know, there's this one time Don't underground worry. fight club. We never talk about it. And um, he was supposed to be my opponent, but he was too freaking cute. And he likes to lick faces instead of fight. So we just hugged mm. it out. And she had some beef jerky in her pocket, so they were best friends within seconds. Yeah, seconds. pocket Secret jerky. Secret fight techniques. Mm. Yeah, no, the pocket jerky helps. Well, now I'm interested. You guys have been telling good stories all night. I'd like to hear another one. Oh, boy, where Ooh. do we start? Ooh. There was that one time with the bricks and the house. We rebuilt that, that house. They cannot be we mad at us anymore. <laughs> there was one time with the spider and you falling into the floor and shit. Um, well, yes, that was Let's not talk about that one. That was I think we spider. talked about that one already, too. Yeah, that's true. I'm just... There was that, like, Tiddlywinks tournament. Mm. Remember? 
I think they're still trying to get the blood off the ceiling. Honestly, well, I still yeah, can't I believe I lost that thing. I know. Like, you you played full contact. You would think after four duels, I would win a tiddlywinks competition. And you yes. think? But. Is that full contact tiddlywinks? What are we talking about here? Oh, no, it was brutal. It's a hard sport. They are incredibly competitive. It's yeah, I can tell you the rules like you wouldn't think you it. Considering they were only playing for like a new set of like fancy little tiddlywinks. They weren't even playing for money. Okay, but they were really fancy. Maybe a different story. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Um, well, there was that cheese festival. Ooh, cheese wrestling! Yeah, like, I think, I think, uh, Obsidia got burns from that, but... Yeah, maybe that's where she is. Maybe there's a wing for healing. I don't know. Mm. Uh, who knows, honestly? The hazelnut cheese was the oh, I mean, so good. Have we talked about that little clucking menace yet? Oh. Uh. The what? The time uh. with the chicken? Now, some time ago, you found yourselves traveling through the hinterlands outside of Fandelia proper. And as it came to be, you all were a bit destitute. You still had your items, you still had your things, but your coin had run painfully low. And Try as you might, the hinterlands outside of this region, which is called Bergenville, um, is not really conducive to foraging. In fact, there are signs everywhere that say, Forage and meet thy fate! Sign the city council. I wonder if our fate is getting free food. Well, there's... I mean, fate might... I don't know what they mean by fate. It might not be as bad as starving to death. Mm -hmm. So now, in so the illegal foraging. Well, why not? Sounds good. All right. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and give me a perception roll? Okay. Let's use the pink dice. <laughs> Do you, oh, I haven't even opened my dice bag yet. That was survival. That was uh, perception. Oh, perception. Sorry. Just to get a lay of the land first. Ooh. That's an eight. That's a 20. Uh, my character sheet is loading, but I rolled an 18. You rolled an 18? Yeah, right. me too. So I think All it's right. a 21. So, Galatea, you're looking around. And of course, you're doing this trip right now. Um, Obsidia has gone off to find other um, personal matters right now. She's uh, contending with a matter back home involving. Um, secession to a throne or an assassination of kings or some, some you know mundane some stuff some boring stuff like that whatever uh, whereas you as you're walking around you're starting to look through some of the bushes and you will see a patch of briar berries now briar berries uh, you'll know automatically just because it, it's a fairly common uh, it's a fairly common type of berry uh, they're very very tart they are edible uh, but they are they're the type of berries that are so tart that the moment you chew them, your teeth are going to start to hurt a little. Very high acid content. So just uh, swallow them straight down. You can't just no swallow chewing. them whole. Um, unless you're a tiefling. They're really not great on tiefling stomachs, but none of you are a tiefling, thankfully. No, we're all perfectly normal, humanish shaped things. I'm going to take one. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is a bright uh, kind of cherry pink looking berry uh, with huge bulbing what are they bus bustules I don't know what a berry berry bump oh it's a little like yeah what are the bumps I don't I don't know man Bear, the, it, the berry <laughs> bumps have got you sprung um, your bumps your bumps oh. um, so the berry bumps are uh, dripping with this um, kind of strangely fluorescent pink juice Totally normal, but just in the light, uh, this is the most neon thing in the land. Cool. Do you want? Yeah. I, I would love to shove as many in my pocket as possible. Because Briarberry freaking pie. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that'd be really good. No, I'm right? just Can you imagine? All right. Hayden, give me a constitution save if you're going to pop one in. It might melt our teeth, but possibly worth oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> What's your roll? Uh, it's a total of 
six. All right, so uh, you're going to see Galatea put one on her tongue and just try to quickly eat it. But unfortunately, one of the uh, the berry buels, the ball, the berry balls, uh, is going to go full gusher in her mouth and just like rupture. And you're going to see Galatea's mouth slowly just like pucker inward. <laughs> I keep saying... Oh my gosh, they're so good, right? Um, sure. And it's about that time <laughs> that Corlin and Cheesy, you're actually going to hear the sound of a hammer in the distance. Just on the hmm. other side of this thatch of woods you were walking through. Maybe they have food. Maybe they're building a pie. Maybe they're coming for us because we're taking berries. Let's go Ooh, find out. Maybe they, they have food. Maybe they have food. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Now, as you walk through the woods, you will find your way quickly through along a deer path that winds through several copses of trees and then emerges at the top of a hill where you see that there is actually a fairly large settlement. You'd say probably about 500 people live here with large Tudor style houses. Uh, positioned all throughout, and some rolling farmland uh, with very high fences around the farm, the actual farmsteads. Okay. And, in the, and as you're up there, you can smell baked bread, cooking meats, the smell of civilization. Oh, baked bread. Let's go. Oh, Let's cooking go. meats. On we bread. need to go. On bread. On bread. All right. So, making your way into town, you can see that there is a large sign that designates Welcome to Burgundville. You pass by a blacksmith shop, work your way inward, and over a small bridge that has a rolling, uh, a rolling stream under it, pushing a giant water wheel. Uh, and that is when you notice that the water wheel is attached to uh, the... In I actually didn't come up with an inn name. Let's 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 find an inn name. The inn of the Oh, actually wait. I have an inhospitable marmot. The inhospitable marmot? Now, that's a very hospitable marmot here, I think. <laughs> uh, this is the extremely the... hospitable marmot. What was the Scarlet Harlot? Oh, that's a ship. Okay. Checking my previous notes. What <laughs> did I do here? Um, all right, as you are working your way in, you will see, uh, you will see that there is a quite large common room in-house called, uh, the, the Friendly Marmot. With a full carved wooden statue of a smiling marmot, which kind of looks like you mix a, a chipmunk with a, with an otter. For those of you who aren't from the Pacific Northwest, they're they're strange Real little cute. they're strange little cute things. Uh, but it's this little holding a sign. Do you enter? Yay! Yeah. yeah. Maybe they have work and they'll pay us with food. Work right. and foods and drink. All right. First of all, at this point, am I previously disguised as a human? If not, I should probably disguise myself as a human. Go ahead. So as you're walking in, you step inside after um, after clearing the entrance way with your full height and come through the other side disguised as a human as per your full verbal nature. Now, the large common room ahead of you has not terribly many tables, but it seems like this community likes to feast off of shared tables. Those long, 30-foot-long planks of wood with a number of seats and pews set around them. The bar is a simple affair, about 10 feet long, directly to the left of the door. And as you enter, a large, portly, bald man with eyebrows for days uh, mm -hmm. smiles over his thick, freshly combed mustache. Oh, hello there! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. 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 Hi, uh, it's good to see new folks here at the Friendly Otter. A friendly Marmot. Sorry, we changed our branding a few years ago. Oh, well, it's good to be new folks here at the Friendly Marmots. Yeah, yes. we, um, the town, unfortunately, um, ev uh, evicted all of the otters due to um, uh, political strife. 
That's awful. Yeah, it's, oh dear. It's what happens when a when an ousted noble has an otter as their family crest. Interesting thing. Oh. Yes, food. Oh yes, absolutely. I've got um, I've got a, a lovely uh, clam chowder. Uh, we've we've seen um, uh, uh, an absolute uh, down by the water. There's been an absolute explosion of shellfish since we kicked the otters out. Uh, so I've got a seafood stew. Uh, is more of a chowder uh, that we serve in a piping hot bread bowl uh, with your choice of sourdough or rye for the bread. Sourdough. Uh, and that's for the three of you. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, possibly two of them. Yeah, right. Um, that would be. Um, do you need a room as well? Do we? So, are we allowed to, you know, camp here, okay. or do we need to rent a room? Uh, camping is forbidden you know, in the city limits, and the city limits expand, extend to the um, the forest on the hill. Uh, but uh, we do offer reasonable rates, and um, if you can't afford a room, uh, there is, of course, the ability to um, uh, rent uh, space in the common area. Uh, but uh, seeing as it's it's summer, it, it would be quite warm down here. Do you have any work? Uh, yeah. Well, we're, actually, we're, we're I, handy. Uh, we're, yes, I, I do. And he uh, gestures over, actually, over to his left, where you see there's a posting board along the wall uh, with the Adventurers Guild crest above it. Ooh. Oh. Which well, you are not members cer- of. Certainly us. Definitely Adventurers. Oh, yes, totally. Yeah, but we're not members. All right. And uh, I, I'll start preparing your food immediately. Uh, it is um, two silver coins, uh, but with a free beverage. Ooh. 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 So classy. Yes. Uh, you, a beverage of your choice, usually um, usually an ale or a stout. Uh, okay. We do have a peach schnapps that we've created recently. That's uh, it's quite it's stout, and I'll take a stein of stout beer, please. A, st- a stein of stout, and uh, and uh, for for you you two. Well, I would love the schnapps. Schnapps, yes. 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 good, good, good. I have never drank oh, schnapps again. And uh, we also <laughs> not have that no, one not time. since the incident. Uh, we also have uh, uh, what is it called? Um, it's where you mix in lemonade, Sh- shandy. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's a good it's a good afternoon after clipping the lawn type of beer. Yes. yes. Um. Uh, so please take a look, grab a seat. Um, and I will uh, be with you shortly. All right. So, do you go over and check the the posting board? Yes. Yeah, we may as well. Looking at the posting board, you can see <laughs> you can see that there is a very large posting board with the Adventurers Guild crest on it, uh, and there you can see all of these official contracts. And these contracts are on on premium paper. They're on these wonderful pieces of vellum with like high calligraphy written on them and mm, wanted quest into the Underdark to rescue a princess. Not Must be done enough. before the full moon. Done that. The next one is... so well last time. Um, Dragon has been rampaging the countryside. Please, help me take this fiend to justice, and your reward will be epic. Meh, Can we take one to dinner sometime instead? Honestly. Half-orc barbarian looking for group. Hmm. There's another one. It's too many goblins in the region. Uh, Adventures 18 plus wanted. Um, <laughs> sorry. <Shut up. laughs> uh, sorry, it's just too. It's too too easy. I know. I'm uh, looking for, for 18 adventurers. 18 adventurers. Yeah, very would be large. Very large situation. Um, the <laughs> other one is uh, go to hell. And then under, <laughs> underneath you see um, uh, vacation packages available now for tieflings and tiefling adjacents. Ooh. Tiefling adjacent. Is it a tiefling adjacent? No. I don't, I don't think we count, no. Um. And that's when you'll notice that for one, none of these contracts you're eligible for. But at the bottom of this posting board, posted unofficially without the stamp of approval from the end, because all ends, of course, Ooh. have a rubber stamp that they can approve these these postings with. Very uh, much our style. Is a 
piece of paper. More of a... It's a ripped piece of parchment uh, that honestly looks like the equivalent of like a CVS receipt. Um, and it says, Urgent. High pay. Low stakes. Immediate interest wanted. Ask for Diedrich. I love pay and low stakes and immediately being interested. At least How you think you that's too? what it says. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't sound too smart if he's doing high pay for low stakes, but... I'm oh, this probably advantage. some kind of catch, but who knows. Probably going to be one of those really weird quests again. It can't be any weirder than the fondue one. Honestly, true. But that was delicious. Oh, yes. That was really worth it. Or that time with the princess. That turned, like, all expectations on their heads. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think I ever want to take one with the princess again. No, so, honestly, this one sounds fine to me. I mean, to be yeah. fair, we, we might be legally barred from interacting with another princess. I haven't really checked. Honestly, but, yeah. But I don't think they know. Remember that she couldn't tell them that we were mean. That's no, she true. couldn't. Cause she's, she's busy being digested. She's busy being pooped out. And nobody else knew we had yeah. anything to do with that. No, exactly. I mean, so except I anyone overhearing us right now in the bar, but otherwise. Fine. Yeah. So, Diedrich. We should ask for Diedrich. Diedrich. Yes, Diedrich. I guess to the bar. The innkeeper. And as you reapproach the bar, you can see that there are three steaming hot bread bowls of soup, of chowder, oh. I should say, uh, placed out for you. And the, the rotund bartender smiles at you. And did you find any good work? Yeah. Hmm. Um, hmm. We something? Like, we, we, we think we found something. Oh, do you know a Diedrich? Make me an insight roll, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Dun 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 dun. Oh, that is not a great roll. I'm rolling shit today. That's 19. great. 19? That's a four. Because I have zero Eleven. on my mock five. There is a pause as you say that <coughs> name. And under those thick caterpillar eyebrows, you will see that a shadow gathers around his eyes for a moment. Corlin, you will get the sense that the man is slightly nervous, taken aback. All of you will get the sense that that name inspires an emotion in him, uh, a, a darker one. Uh, but Corlin, you get the sense of fear. Um, Thing says to ask for him. Yes. Uh, do you want to speak with Diedrich? I must warn yeah. you, you all seem like nice young girls. Diedrich is a, a dangerous mage. Okay. Okay. How dangerous are we talking? He's quite powerful. Okay. And he has a tower just on the edge of Bergenville, on the other side of town. Hi. It's impossible to miss. A giant thatched roof shaped um, like a... Um, he looks at the three of you and blushes deeply. Like um, a tower. Um, <clears throat> just like a dick. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Dick Tower is a classic oh, construction. Yeah. I mean, there's one everywhere. It's, it's true. I mean, it's not like you could build one like bosoms. Mm. I mean, you would just have to build a, a dome-shaped tower and just make it particularly yeah, round. Yeah, it'll be fine. Round. Yes. I mean, a bit of creativity. I think you could do it. I forgot yeah, really, I think. These tower architects are just uninspired. I forgot your alcohol. Just one moment. And he uh, embarrassedly shuffles away to get you your beers. <laughs> Foolishly brought it up around us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not sweet, innocent young things. He comes back with your drinks. Um, that was posted um, earlier this morning. Uh, I, you are the first to find it. I, I technically shouldn't allow it to be up, but Diedrich insisted. Well, if... If you point us in the right direction, we'll uh, go see what he needs, and that way you can take it down. Mm, just take, yeah. take take it with you. If you're taking the job, you take it with you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah that, that's how it works. Yeah. No, just we're really hungry. Well, of course, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's been a few days. Oh, yeah. Really? After the drinks and food, I think. Yeah. Snarf, 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 snarf. I'm just. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just like. 
just like ah, <laughs> just eating all the, the whole bowl of bread. Oh, bread sounds so good right if, now. <laughs> if you're if you're going to um, if you're taking Diedrich's job, um, it, it's um, it's, it's on that uh, on the house on the house. No, 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 no. Thank you. I woke up with that uh, and that missive clinging to the front door and knocking and it, a spectral hand. I'd like to have that witchcraft out of my 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 place as soon as possible. Certainly. We'll okay. finish up and we'll head over. Uh, I'm sorry, small one? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I talked over my friend there. Ooh. Um, I mean, but what makes him so dangerous? Like, is he a dick? Is he, like, Ooh. powerful, turning people into weird things? I, he is a known trans... Uh, transmog... transmatifier? Tran, trans... Um, oh, is he, like, transfigured? Random shit? That kind of stuff? He, no, he turns people into things sometimes. Um, oh, but he's, he's okay. a wicked one. Okay. Uh, he's a quite a powerful wizard. Um, he did battle with... Um, uh, there was an invasion uh, to the south uh, a few years ago uh, with a number of creatures, and, and he participated uh, with, a, with a party of adventurers. Uh, I believe he took down a greater, a greater fell, fell demon. Oh, that's mm. mm. Well, we've been shrunk and turned into weird things before, so yeah, no, we've yeah, we got better. Right. We got this small once. It was not fun. Like I'm small, but. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. Were they not able to restore you? Excuse me, that's racist. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. I don't know many halflings. No. Oh! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We we mostly just get humans around here. I I should know. Uh, um, I I and some half orcs, and that's about it. Is it's just it's it's not really um. It's you're just so exotic. I'm just gripping my hammer. <laughs> hey. At least, Galatea, you're cool. Yes, very, very cruel. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Chill. You're cool because you're different. Is there a fight ring? I want to punch something. Um, I mean, if we go find the job, he might need us to punch something. Uh, no, yes. Yeah. Um, there's a. F uh, no, the, uh, in the next town over, uh, in um, there's a there's a fight ring um, dinner circus, um, but. Who are they next? You. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go there next. How far we need it? At least dinner. You can try to hit me. Okay, yeah, no, sure. Just kick your knees out. Yeah, the problem is that she's got two knees. Kick them both out! Try, mm. you can try. Uh, and he'll go back to polishing the bar. So I guess with the with the revelation that this note magic its way over, I sort of would like to detect magic at it. All right. With my furbo guiles. We'll go ahead See and... See if it's still doing anything mysterious. Give me... You can either give me an arcana or an investigation roll. Both are fine. You'll just get slightly different details. Okay, let's see. I mean, I don't think I'm terrifically good at either of them, so let's do arcana. Okay. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, you will not detect any any magic presently on it. Uh, what he was describing, though, seems to be probably just a mage hand spell or something yeah. like that. Um, simple. It can carry a note across town. It can bang on doors if it wants to. I mean, slowly and actually very creepily since it has to wind up. So it's instead of a... It's more of a... Right? Which, of course, when you first wake up in the dark of the morning to bake bread is probably the scariest frickin' thing. <laughs> Certainly a good aesthetic. Uh, but what you will notice as well as you're glancing down at this note is that it's incredibly messy. Hmm. Huh. So much so that you have a feeling like it was written with Mage Hand? Oh no. <laughs> That's weird. It's very, like, chicken scratch. Yeah. Susie will mention Almost, yeah, kind of. Really... Hmm. Yeah, it's worse than my handwriting. Worse than my handwriting. Ooh. My hands aren't real. <laughs> Are any hands real? I think about it. Can they be real if our eyes aren't real? Exactly. You don't. You never actually really touch anything. Mm -hmm. Think about that one. What is happening? I won't ever again. 
That's what the alcohol is for. Exactly! I'm just chugging. <laughs> but I'm not terrifically convinced this powerful, dangerous sorcerer is, um... Powerful and dangerous? Not powerful or dangerous. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think, I think he's just a little bit dim. Perhaps he has so transformed himself into an unlit torch. Hey, who knows? Right. Uh, Slam my cherry. Hmm. Shall we? Shall we? Let's go. Let's do it. Have a good adventure, girls. We will. You too. Thank you. Thanks Wait, for the food. awkward to say you two to the, to the barkeep. Every gonna, day is I'm an sure adventure here. here. Exactly, Ding. see? Oh, great. Excellent. Thank you for saving me. It's it's my job. Um, all right. So heading back out into the town, you find yourselves in... I mean, Bergenville is lovely. This is kind of a, kind of a suburban community away from one of the larger towns that takes about an hour to commute to every day. And honestly, property values here seem like they're pretty accessible. As you're walking around, you will hear the sound of, you know, donkeys being brought across, uh, carts rolling, chickens, cows. Um, but it's actually, the streets are very clean. Most of them are cobblestoned and um, not covered in poop. Oh, wow. That is the lap of luxury. Yep. You'll actually see quite a few older people out um, sweeping up poop. Mm. Mm. Looks like something that they hire a lot of their retirees to do in their spare time. Some kind of militia. Mm, the poop militia. A poop militia. Mm. Uh, and sure enough, though, once you hit the center of town, which has a wonderful um, fountain of an a wonderful fountain of a marmot, but it looks like it has been chiseled down. About half of the statue looks far more sleek and beautiful. And then there are the rest of the features that have been chiseled down to look like a marmot, where you assume it was probably an otter before. Uh, it's so much so that instead of just spewing water gracefully in a single stream, it's kind of like gleeking it out at like three <laughs> angles. They really don't like otters. Well, and what they get for it is a weird, terrible statue. Yeah, takes their own. <laughs> All right. That's weird. And directly over the houses in the distance, you can see the bulbous rim of a wizard's tower. All right. Bulbous, we talking? Well, you can see the tip, and it's there's a pretty high house in front of it, so not bad. Not a bad little tower. I mean, it, it's a little cold out right now, so yeah. right. Okay, yeah. we'll see how it is later. All right. Day. This is what we're doing, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. It's one of those Sundays. It's one so of those games. It's are fine. you are you heading straight there? I think, I think so. so. Yeah, All I right. think so. All right. So it takes you about ten minutes to walk through town. It's actually quite quite large. And as you head up the other side, you can see that there, uh, on a, a bit of a rise overlooking the town, uh, which of course does make the um, does make the tower look a bit smaller. Um, is the mage's tower this twisting, strange number with a um, with a peaked roof uh, along the sides? You will see there are copses of trees uh, and a path of shrubs that lead up to it. Okay. And nice. honest, honestly, you get the feeling that if he trimmed the shrubs, it would look bigger. <laughs> No, I was just waiting for it. That's why. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was the preemptive nice. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. No, you're not. We're just dragging you down to our level. Yeah. Yep. Down to my level. If you can't beat him, you have to join him. Uh, right? This is my mm -hmm. gutter. I built this gutter. Welcome to it. <laughs> I laid the foundation of this gutter. All right. Walking up to it. You feel the sounds of the medieval town fade into the distance. And soon you find yourself at a, a wide black door set into the dark iron gray stone of the tower. A sigil 
is burned in veins of gold onto the door. And there is a knocker in the shape of a demon's head. The jaw, hold, the jaw um, hanging down as if the demon were screaming in eternal pain. <laughs> Maybe potentially it could be. What do you do? Stick a stick a finger in its mouth. Okay, give me one sec. Um. All right. Um, the demons, the, the demon door knocker is going to clamp its hand around your finger for a moment, not painfully but startlingly. Ugh. Is that shellfish? Oh yeah, it was clam chowder day at the. Oh, at the end. I hate shellfish. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, for your existence. Oh, I was sleeping. And for putting shellfish in your face. Oh. Easy. Oh. What have we talked about about consent before you stick fingers in somebody's mouth? Consent is important. <laughs> that it's important. <laughs> To be fair, I definitely thought it was a statue, not some kind of horrifying sentient statue. Well, Though with I'm... our experience, you probably should assume. Mm. <sighs> Who? I, I see Just saying. Who goes there to the lair of the great mage Dietrich Antonini? Adventurers! He has a job. We want to do he it. He was steady. Professional adventurers of fantastic repute. Yes, well, the eyes of the demon's head will glow red for a moment. Then it be well, adventurers, adventurers, and enter the lair of Diedrich Antonini. Please wipe your feet and don't touch anything. Are you doing your own echo? Yeah. No. That's so cool. Thank you. I like I mean, you. I mean, you do a performance insane. check. It's kind hey, of adorable, you know what? He honestly. got like a 17 on that performance check. That was, that That sounded better than when okay. I did it. Based on what I'm... Mm. Oh, that was impressive. The tip well of the done. door will actually bend a little forward, like it's trying to bow. No. Mm. Thank, nice. thank, thank you. Thank I you. like him. He's, uh, if, tell, tell the He's master, very cool. Thank, tell the master you enjoyed that. I will. Hmm. Very nice, very nice. Um, yes, well done. And, 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 and he, he is expecting you? What's your name? I'm, uh, I'm Corlin. I'm Clive. Clive? Nice to meet you. Um, Gotta tell you, Corlin. You, I'm Teasy. It's nice to meet you, Clive. Do you shake or have an equivalent of handshake? I'm fine. I'm not okay. much of a toucher. That's fair. Mm. Right. Hmm. So, sorry, sorry again <laughs> for the whole okay. gross touching okay. thing. A, do a gnome, a half orc, and a fearbog. That's strange. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, don't that isn't strange. Hmm. Did he just call you a gnome? That's what I am. Uh, <laughs> I got confused. What did you think I was? Well, the innkeeper was just calling you a halfling, and it got called. No, that's why I was pissed, dude. Oh, I thought you were just pissed about being called short. No, no, uh, you're a halfling. I'm not a oh, halfling. little bit more personal than that, I think. Mm. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we've, we've gone too long without food. That's my uh, excuse. Yeah. The master is expecting you. Right, right, right. Right. Professional. Uh, are you <laughs> business? You are you are here for the letter. Yeah. Uh the sin. Uh, yes. Enter and don't touch anything. Okay. Galatea, your mustache is so much better than mine. I know. And with that, the door will tremble, and you will hear the sound of arcane locks disengaging. <laughs> Click. Hmm. The door will creak open ominously, and you will see that the room ahead of you is dark even to your dark vision supernatural darkness impedes upon your normal ability to see in dim light and you can see that ivory stone presses ahead of you do you enter yes 
I Corlin will stick her hand very firmly in her pockets. Okay. The way ahead of you, this tower is probably about a hundred foot circumference. Not terribly large, but inside, you find yourself in a thin hallway, some ten feet wide, and stretching beyond the range of your vision. There are candle sconces placed on the wall in ten foot increments. As you step inside, the door shuts behind you, slowly but menacingly. Bump. Click. And you're standing in almost complete darkness. Who goes first? Okay. Absolutely not. I'll Gal- do it. Galatea, you take a step forward, and then suddenly you hear as two candle flames near you ignite. Ooh. Do you continue? Run down as fast as you can, see how many light, how quickly. I'm just going to start booking it. Okay. (laughs) All right, so let's do, I want you to give me an athletics check right here. Okay. Do they go out after her? Uh, we'll say athletics. That's a total of twenty-two. All right. Well, the can the my my base arcana roll to to see how fast these things go off was a three. So, um, Galatea is just going to like dash headlong into darkness, uh, and the, you'll see the the candle light behind Galatea starts to attempt to go poof 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 like keep up with her sprint. Um, and is just they then go out afterwards once she's well past them. Um. Are you following? No, I'm watching. Okay. Yeah, I'm watching too. No, they're going to keep going in a continuous line. Okay. Um, Galatea, by the time you stop to catch a breath, you are going to find that the candle flames are about 20 seconds behind you. And you have ran almost the length of a football field away from your companions. I'll start strolling to follow her. Okay. Yeah, the same. Slow poke candles. <laughs> well, slow poke friends too. Yes, so, hurry question. Up. Yes. As I'm walking down, I've got my hands fairly firmly in my pockets, but are there any little bits and pieces on little tables, <laughs> on the walls? No, it's surprisingly bare through here. All right, so there is nothing to actually touch. There's I'll relax to touch and take here. my hands out of my pockets. And as you are approaching down the hall... Ooh, cheesy, were you going to do something? No, oh, just the complete opposite of the end score here. Um, running my hands along the wall and booping each candle as I go. All right. Um, the candle flame is cold. And Ooh. as you run a finger through it, I want you to make me a, a wisdom save. I will do that. I don't know if I'll make the save, but I'll try. <laughs> no, I rolled a one. Did you? Okay, actually, they're, it's somehow cold, but you feel your finger burn slightly. Uh, you are going to take a single hit point of psychic damage. Eat psychic damage. Mm-hmm. And your finger feels numb, basically all the way to the knuckle. Yeah, Cheesy is going to yelp with a, ah! That's so cool! And then keep going. As you're walking down the hall, you hear the sound of distant ticking of wood shifting above you, although you can't see the roof. The corridor blackens above you and beyond you. A voice will whisper over the darkness. Who goes there? Uh, We got Uh, your letter. We literally just talked to your door knocker. You know who we are. Uh, Although I like the cool. aesthetic. He did a really good job at his, like, greeting thing. Yes, the door knocker should get a raise. Ah, adventurers. Yes? You yeah, have come yes. to complete my mission. Probably we at least want to talk to you about it. Then perhaps you should not stray so far from the path. We're, we're on the path. On the for, path. I ran the path of candles. For you are... It's a straight you are, line. For you are already here. And then suddenly, as you 
as you blink, you're going to find yourself standing in a large spherical room. Oh, circular room. Spherical room would be... You know what? It's a spherical room. I, I'm committing to that. Cool. It's covered in books and tables, covered in skulls and candles. There's a grandfather clock in the corner that is winding its hands backward in time. Uh, and directly inside of its guts, you can see the skeleton of a bird slowly piece itself back together. This is as gaudy as my dad's fashion sense. There's the head of a demon on the wall kind of going like this. Well, yeah. It looks like it was stuffed by a not particularly great um, taxidermist. Um, in fact, you're pretty sure one of its eyes is a marble. Uh, but the rest, there are, there are entire walls of books and tomes. And in the top corners, of course, cobwebs. At the edge of the room next to a roaring fire, cast in shadow in a large comfortable red easy chair you see a hooded figure with a large brimmed wizard's hat ah you've made it to my sanctum yeah. you are here to fulfill my wishes well i mean you you posted a job so we were hoping to hear what the job was silence how much we'd get paid. I will tell you about this job. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Please do. I quite like your aesthetic here. This is very nice. Galate, I, I approve of your grandfather's fashion sense, I think. Okay. It's difficult to get good demon taxidermy. We can't judge that. It was a, it was a, it was a boxing day sale. It was a group on. Mm. Good, All right, please continue. Are there any tables near me? Yes, there with are. With stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna like just start kind of like looking and kind of like clearly like kind of like mm, they said not to touch, but I want you to. Can go ahead and make me a perception roll to see what's in the room. <laughs> okay. All of you can if you're looking around. You might as well. I was gonna say, I was like, uh, I was sure. 19. Sure, so she can 19? roll if she wants. Yeah, 18. 18? Three. <laughs> Three. All right. So Galatea, you are going to find that the mo okay. I know how to do this. All right. So Corlin, looking down, you're going to see that there is a book called Demonology: Practical Applications and How to and How to Use Them. Um, next to a full alchemy kit that is running a putrid orange liquid through spiraling tubes and decanters, uh, distilling a potent clear yet rainbow shimmering mixture into a concave dish. I'm just gonna kind of lean it like rainbow shimmery. Oh. Uh, it <laughs> smells that? simultaneously like a battlefield and like a perfume shop. Perfume shop. That's a weird smell. Yes. Cheesy Brie, you will find a a set of glowing swords perched above the mantle crossing mm. underneath the demon's head each of them is different than each other and yet very similar one of them is forged out of blackened steel the blade pure darkness with runes that burn an eternal fiery magmic red the other looks to be carved out of pure ivory the blade is like glass, yet you're sure that it could cut through anything. Slight elven writing along the blade in Ooh. the bright blue white of a newborn's eyes. These are legitimately very fancy. And then Galatea, you will find a book that says ducks and how to make them pay. <laughs> I get it. To open the book. Okay, you will up open the book, and uh, congratulations, you now have advantage on all checks to do duck rearing. Yes. It's it's a book. It's not a book on vengeance. It's a book on duck husband husbandry. Right, why would you want to marry Everything ducks? Everything I wanted. So that is a permanent addition to your sheet. Enjoy. <laughs> so I. <laughs> I know how to woo a duck now. You know how to farm ducks, basically. Fucking great. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. There are also some stories in there uh, toward the end. You, you consider them, you know, ducktails. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Please, please do not touch my belongings. Is there ducks on it? I was curious. I like ah. ducks. I mean, duck, duck, goose. We don't talk about that creature here. All delicious. All delicious, but all chaos. I mean, true. I mean, chaos are pretty good. nasty. I require, <laughs> I require your aid. Time is of the essence. Okay. I am Dietrich Antonini, the great wizard of this region. The hat tilts up slightly, and you can see a shining eye beneath it. Okay. A recent affliction has befallen me that only adventurers like you can help. But there is a time limit. It must be corrected by the stroke of midnight tonight. Oh. Okay. okay. What do you need? I require. And the hat moves forward in order to kind of just incite a, an air of um, just majesty and menace and power, and he accidentally falls off the chair. <laughs> or his head does. There's a moment, and the hat and a large ball falls off and hits the ground, the body slumping to the side. Suddenly at the ground you'll hear <laughs> The hat will raise up and glare at you and you will see that you are looking at a very large hen wearing a sized wizard's hat. Are you doing I, okay I down there? I you have a problem. Okay. What's I've been problem? better. What does he look like? You don't see this as a problem? I'm just asking this. I'm curious. Well, I suspect you're not regularly a chicken then. I'm regularly so? a powerful elven wizard. Okay, well, right. I, mean, I think you're still a powerful wizard. I mean, you got all this cool shit. You really but, uh... fucked up your spell. <laughs> Trying so hard not to laugh. Uh, you will notice, though, that this is a very fat frying hen. Like, this is, like... I'm still kind of hungry. Hmm. Did you count your chickens before they hatched? <laughs> Blew the coop on that <laughs> Oh, my God, yeah. You can actually see the chickens start to grow kind of red. Apologies for my companion. We are extremely professional adventurers, and we would love to know what the, um, the next steps are. I was wooed. Wait, was that a chicken joke, too? There were no chicken jokes anywhere in anything that I said ever. I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't even know any chicken jokes. I was... <laughs> Nope. You were wooed. I was wooed and betrayed by a horrible beast that turned out to be a hag in disguise. Oh, uh, so not a handsome rooster then. Okay. Oh, yeah. All your fault, Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. She turned she me into this foul creature. When well, I'm doing it to myself. Thanks. I need you to get the... She, she, she took my wand. I only have the spells that I remember still in my head, and I can barely cast half mm. of them. I can't go encounter her myself, or else I would cast, cast down lightning upon her. Uh, of course. You need us to cast down very frightening lightning upon her. Yes. I need you to go... No, I don't care what happens to her. That bitch can rot. I just want my wand back. Okay, so steal the wand back. So you, you just want the wands? 
I have a wand of true polymorph. Uh, okay. It was turned against me by this w thing. Right. She will try to deceive you. She is in the form of a young merchant's daughter named Gerlinda Myerskoff. Put that down in my little super professional notebook. Cheesy says out loud, pulling out the worst looking notebook in the world. Gullin. It says live, laugh, love on the side of it. Uh, it does. I need you to go to her tower and acquire my belongings. The wand in particular. For when she left this place, she took a number of things with her. I will pay greatly for the wand. I will pay one hundred gold pieces. All right. What's it look like? Really? The chicken what if she has two wands? Oh. And we picked the wrong one. We yeah. probably could have negotiated this a little bit, Corlin. I think. I mean, that's a lot of money. Make it two hundred gold, and we'll grab more than one wand, one, just in, just in case. One hundred and fifty. One seventy-five. Uh -huh. Hold the wing out. Hold the tiny finger out. <laughs> I can't believe I fell for it. Right. Hmm. Yes, 175 gold pieces. And no one I, needs a wand grabbed, okay. The wand is a curling, winding length of maple. You'll be able to tell at its core, it is cold to the touch. It has been infused with the scales of a merlion. There are very few merlions around here. It should be very easy for you to notice. It's got a little bit of tough. I don't know what a merlion is. It's like it's a, it, it's a, it's like a lion. What's my name? Yeah. Okay, but which part? Which part of the merlion is the fish? Yeah, no, that's my question. It's all. It's so like. It's always the ass. Okay, but does, does it still have four claws, or just the top two? It just does the top two, and it vomits and is a form of self-defense. Oh. Huh. It, That's gross. Well, yes, now I feel more prepared for our next adventure on the sea. True fact, that is the official animal mascot of Singapore. Huh. Oh, I have, yeah. I have oh, a plushie okay. of it in the garage. This doesn't shock me. Yeah. On either. I love, I love Singapore. Let's just mash everything together and get a city state. Why not? And they have great food. All right. Anyway. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. You'll notice it because it is a sweeping, curving length of maple with a sharp tip, enough to poke out your eye, so don't run with it. Um, and it has kind of a curly ball palm dangling from its base. Okay. A palm palm. Right. You know, and only the tip is dangerous, okay. Just the tip. Cheesy's gonna mouth, like, look at both of you about the words, I am losing my goddamn gourd right now. <laughs> There's a reason I wasn't allowed in the courts back home. You seem like fairly amateur adventurers. Okay, says the chicken, but oh. <laughs> I am a great and powerful wizard! <laughs> Alright, whatever you tell yourself. Can I roll time. insight? Yeah, go ahead and roll insight. Is this actually an elf? Who got turned into a chicken, or is this a chicken trying to become a mage? I mean, the chicken's talking, so. Yeah, but that doesn't mean much. Uh, so that is seventeen. He's oh. pretty serious. All right, all right. I'm watching the chicken. chicken. I mean, we're certainly experienced. We're just uh, unconventional. Yeah, not <laughs> all of us have strong, upstanding, very human social graces. The Myerskoff Tower is directly between Bergenville and Coffingrad. Wait, they call themselves Coffingrad? Is it like <coughs> cough or like 
first one. Oh, okay. Right, okay. That's so I mean, Baldy Carl are lame, town. but sure. Yes, the entire family are lame. The Myerskoff family has caused great trouble throughout the land. You saw There's a whole the family of hags? I think the daughter has just infiltrated the family. Oh, so she was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's weird. But okay. perhaps they are all hags. Or perhaps they are using her youthful beauty to seed a relationship with the Fandelian court and use their great wealth to put a hag on the throne. You're a conspiracy well, chicken. Rest assured, we will put a stop to probably something. I am a wise and powerful wizard. Conspiracy chicken. Yes, very much you are. I'm also possibly a wise and powerful wizard. We'll see. Go the <laughs> We should go. Thank you so much for your time. The door is behind you. He will wave a wing and you'll hear... And Just digging this out the door as I walk backwards. As you walk it backwards, you will see that you walk right out the front door, uh, and Clive, the door knocker, will, as the door shuts behind you, uh, unless, are Coral and Bree Cheesy, are you leaving as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you head back outside, uh, the door will shut behind you, and you will hear uh, Clive say, did it, did it go well? Um, I mean, so. yeah. swimmingly. Yes. We're going to do the job. Slap. We, we weren't quite expecting that, but... Uh, do you need directions? Yeah! Yeah, uh, uh, what is this? The Myers Blah Tower? Oh, the Myers Cough. Uh, yeah! They're, they're at the tower across the way. Just look to your... And he starts swinging his jaw piece over to the right. Kind of that way. Yeah, right. um, yeah. My, yeah. And over another hill, probably about five miles in the distance, you'll see another... Um, kind of twisting tower rise to the distance. Use distance too much there. You get an idea. Right, okay. Couldn't miss it. Uh, uh, do, do me a favor. Say, say hello to their door knocker. It's my brother, Owen. Of course! Oh, hello too. Hmm. It was a gift from the master before all of the trouble. Before the... All the trouble? You know, with the betrayal and the hags. Right. Hag trail. Well, the clucking began. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's going to turn you into one when we leave, if we succeed. Jeezy is repeatedly and visually biting her tongue. And every time it looks like she's going to say something, she just goes, nope. Nice. All right. So, off in the distance, you can't see the tower. Clear as day. Uh, it's a little past probably about three o'clock in the afternoon right now and you think you can five miles you can be there by probably 4 30 or 5 all right did you just set out yeah yeah okay. I'm right for it. you walk through the countryside and um are you just gonna kind of just do a straight as the crow flies or are you gonna head over to the trail and take the actual like uh, the actual pathways between the towns Maybe let's start with the pathway. Let's start with the pathways, but we can... We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll go wherever. Okay. As the time passes on, clouds thick and black roll into the sky above you. And you see a little bit of thunder dancing between them. Rain that starts to fall. That be a nice day. Mm, it was. Great. A spattering of rain falls on you. Can I get everyone to make me a perception roll? Mm -hmm. Oh. All of 12. 12? 19. Perception, that's a total of 7. 7? I'm rolling balls today. As you make your way down toward Coffingrad and the other... Uh, the other tower. Um, you'll see a couple of carts come by. Uh, people dressed in uh, in clothing that's not quite suited to a summer rainstorm. Uh, one of the carts passes you, and they just give you the very quickest. Hey! 
And it's at that time that as the cart passes, Corlin, you'll notice that you think you're being followed. Casting a... I'm sorry, go ahead. Just being distracting. I need to get some things off my jacket off my my chest i was trying so hard are we sure this whole thing isn't just a, a practical yoke <laughs> his outfit was quite the the dashing ensemble um and cheesy's gonna just gonna go off for five solid minutes of this bullshit <laughs> okay i i want you to give give roll me charisma real quick pure per, pure charisma or is this perform this is perform okay do 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 um, 16? 16. Okay, everyone here may re-roll perception again oh. with advantage. <laughs> oh no. Ah! Dice down, dice down! I got 16. Nice. 18. Okay, and I will roll with disadvantage. Oh god. Okay, so all of you, um, Corlin, as you glance over your shoulder, you get the sense that someone's following you. And that is when Cheesy launches in to an unending, just, rant about chicken jokes. And I ended up with a 21. 21? Uh, you advantage. will definitely see that there is a dark shape kind of dancing between bushes as you continue down the trail. And it's big enough that it's not just Obsidia catching up with us. Yeah, it's not Obsidia. It's bigger than Obsidia for sure. Mm. Except that you notice that as Cheesy keeps going, the reaction from this mysterious stalker becomes more erratic. Their hiding becomes less less silent. There's more rustling in the bushes. There's more... And all of you will start to hear it, this horrible attempt to trail you from the bushes. And just the occasional little bits of swear who speaks elvish by the way oh i'll have to check hang on not, not me you'll just hear like piece of mother, but, 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 but. oh i totally speak elvish okay you hear like seriously who is this bitch talking about i am a power wizard coming from the bushes well. behind you about 20 feet I'm very sure that the powerful chicken wizard, wherever he is, is in fact a very powerful elf wizard and certainly too powerful to be offended by terrible puns that I cannot resist making, as is my way. Oh yeah, I mean, honestly, the more powerful be... you are, the better sense of humor you should have about this. Right, it would thing. be quite the right. show of weakness to be upset by such pointless puns and not see the humor of your chicken-related predicament. Turn you into a chicken so you like it. You will not! I will shout at the bush. <laughs> and you'll see something run away from you in the bushes. Nice. Well, I don't really know why he's following us. Stay in your fucking tower! Lay some eggs! Make us breakfast when we get back. Oh, you're screwed, Galatea. <laughs> don't. Don't. What's the no. so hot? <laughs> All right. Okay, so, but what if he lays the eggs on the roof? Will we get egg rolls then? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, I walked into this by plotting this game like this, didn't I? Yes. And you gave us a warning with the picture. Oh God, I love that picture. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. How did you not know? <laughs> Okay, hold on. I'm gonna put this picture in the game real quick, just so it's covering up that pint. Oh my god. Sure. Okay, give me. Our great and powerful chicken wizard. Because I feel like the chat needs to be able to He's see this. He's got chicken legs for days. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they've seen the notification on Instagram or Twitch, or not Twitch, uh, Twitter and Facebook, should be there. But... It's kind of nice to have because the this game's game a bit... ones there too. New meaning to like skinny guy with chicken legs. Mm -hmm. oh, my God. Skip leg day. Uh oh, full screen yeah. chicken adventures. I think. Totally yeah, it takes a day. second. He's like, I gotta, I gotta. No, yeah. There we go. 
All right. Yeah, you may be cutting off part of Galatea. Nope, just give me a second. Twitch just takes a few moments oh, to sweet. catch up. I'm already a minute ahead of go. you. <laughs> You're already fed. <gasps> All right. So I don't have that spell anymore. Crap. Um, boop, 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 boop. There we go. Uh, and also, it's that, hilarious that uh, he managed to turn himself into a hen instead of a rooster. Well, otherwise, he might get his chicken nuggets in a twist. <laughs> There's so much regret. Oh, Kelly, and I love it. Oh. Oh. I'm glad I did not wear a ton of makeup today. I would have wiped all that eyeshadow off. I, I think it's fantastic that I, I... I love playing NPCs that actually, like, are so full of themselves that you actually derail them and frustrate them. Because <laughs> it's never me being frustrated. I don't, I don't care. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sad that you used that line right then, Christine, because I, I had prepared for that line to be used and have, have him respond to it. Oh. Damn. I knew someone would get on me about the hen thing. Now, all right, so anyway, you continue down the road, wandering ever toward the tower, which is actually a bit nicer. You mm. can see that it looks like an old mage's tower as well that's been repurposed, gentrified with a large, a large manor built into its base. It's more like, um, it's more like a... a I mean, it's still a tower. What's the, like in a castle, it has a tower. And... Anyway, no, no. It's, it's been reincorporated into part of this manor. And as you get there, the storm has slowed your passage down. It's quite dim out. Just around fifth bell in the early evening. The rain is still pattering down. After your brief outburst with the chicken earlier, you haven't heard from him since. You hope he's okay, at least. Uh, he's following us out into the wilderness. He straight up might get eaten by something. Yay. Yeah, hopefully not, because then we're not getting paid. I know. Well, we should still find out what happened. I'm, sure, yeah. I'm, I'm certain it won't be boring. Hmm. Do you approach the tower? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, the tower is on a large hill and down toward um, where the river is much wider beneath it. There is a much nicer looking town even than Bergenville. It looks more like a trade hub. Everything looks kind of new and shiny here. Like all of the houses are prefabs. They've all Ooh. kind of from a set menu of types of house that they're allowed to have built in more of a northeasternly style. Uh, huge bay windows everywhere. And there are quite a few very large shopping areas. And something that you haven't seen before, um, uh, which is a Myra Mart. Hmm. Never seen one of those. Well, it's, its sign is lit by flaming letters. And it's about the size of of two inns stacked together. Looks like quite Big. an emporium. We'll call it my mart, actually, because that just sounds better. M Y Mart. <laughs> so what do you do? Um just make our way to the tower. Yeah. Just I'm gonna go straight to the tower. Okay. Now the tower is a tall, a tall building of about about mm, about a hundred feet tall, and the building around it is a comfortable but not ostentatious manner of two floors. You can see that there is a front drum above sneeze. Bless you. Whew, sorry about that. <coughs> Everybody, get it out. Get it out. All right. So, directly in front of you, you can see Bloody hell. 
You're not sick, right? No, I'm fine. Okay. Directly in front of Allergies you. Allergies and gum don't go well together. Oh, fair enough. The building has a front door, as well as a side and a back door. There are sheep stables out on the side coming out of the back door, as well as uh, a number of dogs that are prowling around the large fenced-in front yard. It looks very, very comfortable. Kind of like a, the type of manor that would you would picture in, say, like a Swiss village. You know? Heidi right. would live here, you know, type of thing. If you get the um, reference. I watched that movie. Yeah. The animated one was creepy. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I watched the old live-action one. Oh, the animated one has a really creepy, like, Willy Wonka-style dream sequence. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah. I haven't thought about that. I watched that all the time when I was like, I don't know. Totally uncultured. I have no idea what this is. Uh, it's a story about a girl who goes to live with her uncle in the Alps. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then kind of gets taken back into the city and she doesn't like it. She wants to go back. Because yeah. he's like a nice old dude who started yeah. out a real... Al he's basically a Sundare. Yeah. 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 Uncle Sundare. <laughs> uncle Sundare is a hat I want. Sorry, my notes are ridiculous today, guys. I've got pop militia, legally barred. Um, <laughs> anyway, looking ahead, you can see that there are three entrances there, but also the tower itself has tightly sealed shutters on six different windows that lead up in a spiraling pattern to the top, which has a widow's walkway around its open... Um, around an opening, almost kind of like a lighthouse would. Everything appears to be shuttered, even the windows of the house. There is no smoke coming out of the fireplace. It's the middle of summer, but it's a little chilly. What do you do? Hmm. Approach the door? I mean, not to do the annoying spellcaster thing, but I might detect magic before oh, yeah, no, Elte no, no, approaches no, no. the door. You do that. That's right. Better go peek in a window. All right. Well, the windows are shuttered pretty tightly. Okay. No like cracks. Um, you can go ahead and give me an investigation roll to try to find one that does have cracks in it. So I'll say you're on the side yeah, of 20. the house. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so a bit of warped wood right at the first window you go to gives you a quick look inside of the house. And what you will see is this place is opulent. There, its humble exterior belies incredible wealth. The inside has plush carpets, tapestries along the walls. Um, you're, you can glance into the open concept kitchen from here, which has bowls and bowls of fresh fruit placed out. Uh, tottering around, uh, you will see that there is a halfling, an old halfling with gray hair and ears that are starting to droop from age, uh, who is wandering around, replacing the fruit with fresher fruit, polishing windowsills, um, and just setting everything up. He's dressed in a flawless doublet uh, of black and white. And, uh, but no, there is, it's just lavish inside of this room. It's one of the most comfortable living spaces you have ever seen. Portland drools a little at the fresh fruit. Super fancy. Uh, now, cheesy. Looking around with magic, you you can tell that the front door knocker, uh, a smiling demon face, um, is magical. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't believe you can see through walls with it in fifth edition, like you could in Pathfinder. No, I'm not sure. I'd have to look mm -hmm. it up, but I will assume not. No, you can sense it in a 30-foot radius. Is it, okay, you can just sense it? It doesn't have to be in sight? Yeah, okay. you, you can sense magic around you, and usually, like, if your friends are magical, they'll kind of light up for you. Or... Okay. So but you'll... you can sense in a 30-foot radius. Okay. Cool. So you'll sense all of your friends, as well as you'll sense a little something just on the edge of your vision, or the edge of your senses behind you, behind a bush. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll also notice that this place is teeming with magical energy of all different schools. Well, there's a nice door knocker. This place is perhaps spooky, and I think the chicken is still behind us. Can I 
check to see if the chicken's behind us? Yes, you may. Oh, the chicken rolled well for once. Mm. Or did he? It's a total of seven. <laughs> there is no chicken directly behind you. Wait, as you turn around, you'll notice that you'll hear... And there is a small chicken coop behind the sheep pen. One chicken eyes you from over there. Mm. And then goes back to pecking at worms. That could be your employer. You never know. Just staring at him. Really committing to the chicken bit now. All right. So cheese. Hmm. Cheesy. Do you approach the front door? I will, and I will not even stick a finger in its mouth this time. I will instead walk up and say, "Hello." Oh, hello. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing quite well. Your brother wanted us to pass on a hello. Oh, how is Clive doing? Oh, he's doing okay. I sort of stuck a finger in his mouth because I didn't know he was... Oh, he hates that. Well, yes, he I'm did, fine with but... it, but I mean, you know, it's... Younger brothers. Well, they're... I would ask first, now that I know you're, oh, you're talking. Door. Okay, fine. <laughs> oh, but... So, oh, it tickles a little. Mm. Yep, uh, sure is weird. Mm. Oh, I see. What's a fur bog like you doing out here? Uh, well... It's a cute little illusion spell. That's nah, pretty... Bog standard. Bog standard. You know how it is. There's all sorts of sounds. Yeah, sorry, mm. just one moment. Fire truck across the way. Oh, oh good. Oh, Ryu, that's what Ryuji's barking at, is he hears. <laughs> oh, he hears it through my, my speakers? Yeah, he hears the sirens and he ran outside to go see what it was. That's cute. Mr. Baby. All right, we're good to go. All right. Uh, well, we are a small band of extremely professional and very friendly adventurers who have been, uh, I guess, instructed to find a couple of missing items that may be here. Hmm. Who uh, should we talk to about this? Uh, well, um, Oslan uh, is the butler at the moment. Uh, the, the family's not not. Mm. Well, if you talk to Clive, um, you, you, um, mm. I don't know if I. Um, you can make me a persuasion roll. Sure. Show your good intentions, and everybody, don't forget that because you're so swell and made so many good jokes, you do all have a point of inspiration. Mm -hmm. I have twenty three on persuasion. I rolled a nineteen. Uh, well, I've never <laughs> known a furball to lie about anything in my life. Uh, so um, yes. Um, mm. Uh, 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 Arslan, the but uh, the butler is in right now. He's a bit he's a bit cross. Uh, it's just a rule, um, but um, he's a good enough fellow. And um, if you uh, uh, perhaps if you play up that it's it's rainy and miserable out, and that you could use a spot of tea. He's a he's an aficionado. Um, but, well, and we are extremely good company. I know that the. That uh, the 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 master and and misses and little misses uh, left the house um, mm, uh, about an hour ago. Whereabouts were they going? Uh, it looked like into town. Uh, I... But um, I, I I believe Austin probably knows more. Uh, should, should we knock on you then? Oh, uh, please! I'm by all means. Here, Galatea, why don't you do the honors? Oh, sorry. You'll have to pick me up to do it. Yes. Well, it's more fun this way. Here. And just grab it. <laughs> I'm not going to do that anymore for my teeth's sake. Um, uh, so you knock on the door, and there is a moment of pause before you'll hear, just a minute, just a minute. Okay, do one of you two want to talk this time, or should I keep talking? Go for it. Hmm. You're good at it. Oh, gosh. You held in all the chicken jokes. The door minutes. will creak open about three fingers breaths. And now there's a plane. And, can't hear it. Okay. I love this mic. You can hear it's really, really just like boom right here and nothing else. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. As you approach, or you're already there. Sorry. The plane distracted me. Uh, so the door opens about three finger widths. 
And looking down, you can see that a wizened old halfling looks up at you. Yes? How can I help you? Oslin, correct? Uh, yes, I'm Oslin. Oh, you come very highly recommended by your door knocker here. Good to meet you. My name is Cheesy. Cheesy. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is Corlin and Galatea. Let's see. I, I, um, what, may I ask, is the nature of your uh, visit? Well, we're a small band of extremely polite and professional adventurers who are tasked to find some missing items. Um, and we're hoping to talk to someone here about it because our employer seems to believe those items may be here. I see. Uh, I'm afraid that I, I can't help you. The master of the house is out at the moment and I am charged with keeping this house spick and span, secure and safe. Has anything oh. weird happened lately around the house? Or around this area? I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. I'm- no, I'm just saying, like, weird things happen and I'm just curious. It is pouring rain outside, isn't it? It's yes, kind of cold. Yeah. Could we trouble you to wait for the master of the house inside, just to escape the rain? I'm happy to repay your kindness with a song or a tale. Never not a tale. Make me a persuasion roll. Sure. Can I assist her? Yes, you may. Uh, so, uh, Alexa, hold on just one sec. So, Galatea, make uh, me a persuasion roll. Oh, it, she would have it with advantage, wouldn't she? Don't you have to roll first, though? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm assisting her, she just rolls with it. Yeah, you're right. It's just a basic assist. I'm thinking teamwork rules. Um, no, yeah, it's all good. I'm bouncing Is it actually wait. advantage in 5th edition? I thought it was something different. No, you te- look it up. teamwork gives you advantage. Mm-hmm. All right. So I rolled an 11 the first time and a 10 the second time, so I have a 15. 15? Mm-hmm. Well, it is fairly damp outside. I can't let you into the rest of the manor, but um, if you come into the kitchen with me, I can give you a, a spot of tea and let you warm up a bit. But if the master does not... We won't stay the night. We won't stay too long. We're just... It sucks outside. It would be lovely to warm up. It's been a bit of a walk. We've had this strange chicken following us the whole time. That sounds like a, an odd story. Uh, Look, um, you seem like nice girls. You can come in for a cup of tea, but I have to warn you, um, the master is not expected back until late, if not tomorrow. Uh, I suppose we could stay somewhere in the area. Mm-hmm. But if you want to come well, in and, and dry in the interim, off, we could have some tea. Yeah, that sounds good. He'll remove the chain well, from the door and let it let you in. Uh, well, thank you so much, Oslin. And he... Um, He's a little pot-bellied halfling with, uh, who honestly looks like a stick man beyond the roundness of his gut. Um, that strange deposits of fat with age, right? Um, and as he waddles his way into the kitchen, he starts making um, starts making you some fresh tea, um, using a step ladder to reach all of the ingredients as he goes. Do you take um, cream and sugar? We have um, we have both cow and sheep milk. Oh um, yes, please. Just black tea, please. I think just black tea for me as well. I do have, um, uh, I have some cardamom, uh, cardamom mm. and uh, masala from Apesh. I have, uh, oh, some Thesterellian blackberry. I Ooh. have, um, let's see, and then, oh, I do have a, an Echidnian black. Uh, it's a bit um, robust, um, and then of course I have the local Darjeeling. Ah, uh, I'll try the blackberry one. Mm-hmm. That's good. I may try that robust one. I, yes. I have several tea balls. This would not be a problem. What was that? I said awesome. Oh. Best invention ever. All right. So <laughs> and I will on. join in on the robust teaness. Okay. So but he... I think I'm gonna want the sugar and cream. He will happily serve you all. Um, you will all be able to dry off. Uh, Cheesy, you're going to regain that hit point. Uh, Delicious hit points. The robust tea basically tastes like... It tastes like Australia. <laughs> like that kind of wild, um, spicy, um, dangerous taste. <laughs> like it's a very robust... Like you're pretty sure this plant was carnivorous. 
when you take so a drink. Anyone from Australia in chat or watching this later. Yeah, absolutely. None of us are sorry. Yeah, we're never sorry about Australia. Some of my best chatters are Australian, though. They're always like, I had this one guy who was just stuck with us for like six hours one night, completely ripped off his gourd. The one episode. So I had this drunk Australian in the chat having a great time with us in generic when we went into the Underdark. And I decided that if that all drow should start with stock Australian accents because they come from down under. Oh no. <laughs> and that was the episode the Australian dude decided to show up. Oh no. And he had a great time. It was good. Uh, good sense of humor. Um, so he'll serve you and uh, just do idle chit chat. Are you trying to get anything out of him? Um, I'd like to just kind of like, as I'm sitting there, just like look around the kitchen just to see if I can see any weird decor on the walls or anything. You... Go ahead and make me a perception roll. And anybody who wants to can do it as Natural well. 20. Natural 20. No nice. need. So Galatea, um, as you are shuffling over, um, as you are getting seated, you'll actually see that there is a message uh, pinned to a cork board next to what looks like a, like a cold pantry. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a bunch of children's drawings attached to it with various pins and magnets, um, as well as just some like little reminders. Uh, but you will see that there is a message on it that says, Oslin, heading into town, uh, heading into town with Gerlinda, uh, have a fire ready for a bath after, after midnight, um, and please uh, order some iced cream from the local market. Love, um, love Svenja. Okay. It's written in the in, a, in the flowing handwriting that you're pretty sure it's probably a woman's handwriting. Okay. Also, the name Svenja. Svenja, like S V E N. It's like Sven with Ja at the end. Svenja. Yeah. Svenja. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I spelled it right then. Yeah. Yeah. I I right. picked really easy to spell names this session, except for Antonini, which is my Antonini, my favorite <laughs> last name. That I'll never use again. All right. Um, I will chat with him and just kind of chat about that we were at this previous town, and that's kind of what got us over this way. And uh, we'd heard that there'd been various gossip that the daughter was quite beautiful. And oh, blah, yes, blah, yes, blah, it's and... true. Um, Lady Galinda is. Uh, She's the loveliest young woman with long blonde hair that cascades all the way down to her ankles. She keeps it up in, in several braids. And it's, she has the brightest blue eyes like a summer's day, well, a, a regular summer's day. And um, just has always had the cutest little button nose. Lovely, lovely girl. So, so How old is she? She's um, uh, 20. Money? Um, as of um, uh, two days ago. Oh, well, that's lovely. Go, yes. I've been with the family for almost three generations now. I have great love for all of them, especially her father, Jorg, and um, it's, this is the best generation of Myerskoffs that I've ever seen. That's lovely. Mm. Yeah, we'd been, we'd heard a little about her. It sounds like everybody's quite impressed with how pretty she is, and oh. It's good. Um, there were several that were quite um, taken with her. Well, not so much taken, but kind of worried because it, oh, what be was it they were saying that some old fart seemed to be quite interested in her, some old mage. Oh. And they were all quite disapproving. He was so much older. Oh, him. Uh, can you go ahead? I want to see how well this 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 hits. So this is going to be a deception roll. Oh shit. <laughs> 18! Okay. Hey! And my insight. Hmm. Actually, you know what? So, what is gone? Okay. Alright, so, um, he'll, he'll look at you for a moment. Dietrich Antonini. Hmm, yeah, that was it. It was a weird name. He's a weird man. He's. 
a right, if I may say so in front of you young ladies, is a right bastard. Not a problem. Lots is what you're telling me. Cheesy's just joking. Yeah, it's, it's fake surprise. Dietrich and Nini and um, the mistress have had a tumultuous relationship for the past year. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a little longer. And I dare say that I <coughs> kept so much of it under the radar when they first started seeing each other at her request. I can't say no to her. But it's good. It's good that it's over and that everything can return to normal and that we can find a good uh, a good husband or even a boyfriend for her or maybe just give her some time by herself. Mm -hmm. It sounds like uh, maybe he was quite a bit older and preying on a desire for romance. Did she seem at all interested at first? Uh, Dietrich uh, was a handsome elf mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. it's easy he's got the legendary reputation and he used to wear these strange little outfits with the skimpy the skimpy canvas pants down beneath that hip thing the the v uh. and he, he just he's got a Kind of a, a real bardish sex appeal. So he's really hot, is what you're telling me. He's fairly attractive, to, according to the women, although he's not my type. I, mm. I've i always been a fan of more Rubenesque men and women. That's fair. But I come from a colder region, and you like to keep warm at night. Um, but enough about me. Um, <laughs> he... <coughs> I, he charmed her using the way that rich, handsome men tend to. Although I dare say he probably wasn't as rich as he let on. Not nearly as rich as the Myaskoffs. Hmm. Mm. Mm. That's why I'm so happy that um, she's back home. She arrived uh, in the middle of the night last night, crying and That's, um... Do you have any idea what happened? That sounds like it must have been a dramatic break. Just for the gossip wheels back at the next town on our way back. They they had been off and on breaking up for quite a while, and I think you'd finally just... The last straw? Hmm. She was finally tired of his philandering and, and poor treatment. He was quite a caustically tongued rapscallion. Strong words. But, um, it's good. That's why they, um, I shouldn't mention this, but it, I, well, like I said, the master and mistress, um, probably won't be back tonight, uh, until quite late. They're watching a late show, uh, in town to cheer her up at her favorite restaurant, the fire, the friar's fable. Lovely. Uh, it was something they used to do all the time when she was just a wee little girl. She used to love seeing the horses and the pageantry. Well, no, well, I kind of want to see horses and pageantry. I mean, honestly, Those yeah. sound pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we'll have to check that out uh, before we move on to a different area. It's quite lovely. The, the tickets are quite expensive, but uh, it, if you can afford it, it's worth it. All right. Cool. Was the... Thanks. Uh... Was she gone for any like, period of time? Like, being she, out with... I mean, she moved in with like... him. Oh. She was living in his tower. And she would write her mother occasionally these letters that explained the brutality she had to experience on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds awful. I shouldn't have read them, but she left them out and I was cleaning, and I do care dearly about the girl. Of course. Well, I think that's completely normal and our lips are sealed. Thank you. 
Well, um, if there's anything else I can get you for the road, I do have some scones I can send you off with. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Oh, I love oh, scones. Thank yeah, thank you kindly. Um, we'll we'll pop off to if they're not going to be back for quite a while, then we'll pop off to an inn. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's there's get out of your way. Um, strawberry and vinegar works for you. Ooh, sounds oh. lovely. All right, he'll serve you up a um, six strawberry and balsamic vinegar scones. Mm, that sounds so good. That does sound so good. And then today I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I need to eat mm. after this game too. That's yeah. gonna be great. I just baked fresh bread that's waiting for me, so. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna make strawberry muffins when this is done. I was honestly gonna make scones today, so I was like. Nice, Ooh. there you go. Yeah, you know what to make. Oh, that's gonna be great. I want bread, but I'm not eating bread anymore because quarantine has been rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair. All right, <laughs> so with that, um, he thanks you for your visit, wishes you luck on your adventures. Is there anything else you want before you head out? I think so. No, I think I we've think got so. a little sense of the other side of things potentially. Mm. When we're in like the uh, like the foyer, like about to leave mm -hmm. the manor, can we see almost into any other rooms? You can see down into quite a few of the rooms from here, actually, down the hallway and into the kind of sitting room. I, a lot of this manor is very open concept. All of the public spaces are very, very open. Okay. Um, what are you trying to find? I'm just trying to see if I, if there's like any like chests or like wands just lying about. <laughs> not, not necessarily wands, but like anything that looks out of the ordinary to have like in a common space. All right, uh, so you will see, uh, make me an investigation roll again, uh, with advantage because you're not 20 before. Ooh. God. Yeah, the, even with advantage, that's garbage. That's a total of, uh, do, 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 that's a total of six. Oh, okay, I can't help you with that one. <laughs> um, so the, the front entryway, what you will get the sense of is there are a bunch of things strewn about the entryway that it looks like he was in the process of cleaning. Um, mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. looks like the equivalent of when someone comes back from a breakup. They've got boxes and boxes of stuff. Mm. A lot of a lot of different types of women's clothing that ranges from like very flowing and elegant to like some real medieval gothic stuff. Okay. A lot of corsets. Just strewn mm -hmm. about boxes in the living room space. Okay. Well, as I do. Yes, you do. And I guess um, I might want to do a little bit of insight to make sure this person seems authentic when he's telling us all of this stuff. But All right, go ahead. I assume so. But when you no, assume. That is not an amazing role. I think I assume. You assume. Oh, no, 14. So maybe I informedly assume. He, um, he is definitely holding back the amount of venom he has for Dietrich. Uh, mm -hmm. But overall, is seems fairly legitimate in his concerns. Oh, sounds good. Uh, he, you will get the sense that as you're departing, he does seem a little anxious. That you get the sense that maybe he doesn't get to talk very often, and he may have put a little too much of himself out, and is very anxious that you're going to mention something. Well. I will, again, on our way out, say, so lovely to meet you. Of course, our, our lips are sealed for any gossip oh. sources. You know how it is. Thank you. Um, I do appreciate it. If, you, um, if you're heading into town and you're going, um, you're going by Nestor's Roost, it's, the, it's one of the nicer um, taverns in town. Um, Nestor is a second cousin of mine. Tell him that you could use um, a discount on your stay and you should be able to stay for uh, a decent rate. Oh, how Thank lovely. You. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great um, life. <laughs> you too. You too. Uh, it has been. Goodbye. And he'll Bye. shut the door behind you. That was ominous. Okay, let's go find somewhere to talk. I don't think it was intended to be ominous, though. Mm -hmm. There's all a right. lot to unpack here. Yeah, all the boxes that you were... I mean, yeah! <laughs> Can I get everyone to do me a quick favor and make me a perception roll? No. 
Ten. Ten? Yeah. Six. Uh, Fifteen. As you're standing outside talking, Corlin, as the two of them are going back and forth about how ominous or not ominous that whole thing was, glancing down, you're going to see in the mud the unmistakable marks of chicken feet leading <laughs> their way into Myers Cough town. Or into, pardon me, into, uh, into Coffingrad. I'll point it out to the others. Chicken chicken! Well, I mean, this could be bad. I'm starting to feel like maybe this was a bad breakup and she uh, hit him with his own wand. Yeah. Just out of anger, and I kind of not sure that she's wrong. I think she might be in the right here. I, I don't really see any evidence of mischievous hags or whatever. No, and that that's starting to strike me as something that uh, one of those rich, pretty boys would say when a girl dumps them. Yeah, no, because people when they when they get broken up with, they're like, "Oh, she was such a bitch, blah blah blah. She was kind of a hag, you know." And I'm just mm. I'm just saying. Especially with uh, the one who's the bitch. Uh, he was very touchy. <laughs> little bit. A little bit of a little bitch. Well, we did shake wings on it, so we should at least <laughs> see if we can find the wand. All right. Maybe. And with that, we're going to take a quick bathroom break, and we'll be right back with the second half. Of the chicken run. Dun, dun, dun. So don't dun, chicken run. Dun, don't don't chicken. Don't chicken out. We'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> now, as you head down into Coffingrad, you'll notice that uh, cicada are out, and the storm has cleared up. Although night is falling a bit earlier than you expected it's about seven o'clock by the time you make it into town after your visit with uh, the butler of the estate it's still early summer enough that dusk is reaching across the horizon a bit earlier than expected the town is still bustling and alive and there are a number of peddlers still out hawking their wares and directing you for the greatest values in town. There are mm -hmm. um, very garishly dressed men, women walking up the street, offering companionship uh, of differing levels. Uh, you'll see that there is what appears to be like a maid or butler cafe on the right as you enter, where you can just pay to be served and, and wooed by princes and princesses from across the land, share mm. their good favor with thee. No touching in smaller letters. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and you will head into town. In the distance, though, you can hear whinnying. And what sounds like the sound of battle echoing from the center of town. We're going that way. Well, unless it's Fight Club, that's probably the horse thing. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. Are the chicken feet going that way? The chicken feet are going that way, but once they reach the town, they become a bit lost with the thoroughfare of, of uh, muddy footprints on top of the cobblestones. Mm. You would can need... I attempt survival or perception to try and pick up the trail? You can give me um, you can give me survival to do tracking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to spend my inspiration on okay. this. Okay, then just roll flat because you're going to have disadvantage on this. Okay. You're not going to believe this. Did you actually roll a nat 20? <laughs> I can pick up my camera if you want to see. No, no, because then it'll it'll show that we don't actually own a... Oh, you're, uh, you, that we don't own a cool brick flat. That's true. <laughs> this is fake. Yeah, everything's fake. Everything's fake. Everything's fake. We just ordered a bunch more fake screens. It's going to be great. Uh, we could be anywhere. It's going to be So great. you will actually find somehow... Um, you won't find Little muddy... hints of muddy chicken prints on different you'll, cobblestones. What you'll find more than that is that other muddy footprints have chicken-shaped bits scraped out of them. Mm. 
from where the mud ended up off of the chicken feet, but he walked, well, or whatever chicken, uh, walked along their muddy trail. All right. Do you follow it? Yeah. Winding down along the lanes, you'll pass a large gazebo where a bard is laying prone across a bench playing a a lovely tune to a whole band of boys and girls who are um, kind of wooed on the lawn in front of him. Something swooning? about throwing... Is there swooning going on? There is absolute swooning. He's singing something about throwing money away. Mm. Um, yeah, I... throw it away my way. <laughs> yeah, we volunteer. Oh yeah, we volunteer as the uh, money receptacle. When a <laughs> humble bard Race a ride along. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I was like, don't even yeah. see you. Uh, no. Stay in character, Kelly. Still Stop stuck talk. in our heads. Don't talk about your Witcher cosplay. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'll send you something later, Hayden, you'll really like. Please do. Um, you continue down the way, and following these chicken scratches, you will eventually come to a huge, huge building roughly the size of four warehouses it has very few windows but you can hear the sound of battle inside there's a nice steepled roof that is um, entirely made of canvas that's covered in bird shit Um, there are torches lit all around the exterior posted guards doing quick walk-arounds wearing a standard of colors that you've never seen before. You can smell roasted meats in the air, hear the sound of laughing and cheering inside. And there above them, you will see that there is a sign. The Friar's Fable. Dinner and show. Just gonna go in. (laughs) Alright, as you approach the front door, um, a woman from the ticket booth will lean over. Hello, labs. Hello. Uh, what, what can I do for you? Uh, how much for three tickets? Uh, I'm sorry, loves. Uh, unless you're um in the place for uh, a noble's box, uh, is gonna run you about ten gold pieces per ticket. Okay. Glancing down at your threadbare wallets. Though. Mm. You wouldn't have accepted such a foul quest if you had that type of scratch. Well, hmm. Um. Mm, I'm, sorry. I'm gonna turn to the others, pull them aside, and be like, "Why don't we see about sending a note into what's his like the dad?" <coughs> Could try that. I mean, we could also like try chicken sneaking dude in his performers. Here. It looks like Chicken Dude came here. Yeah. You can so... See that she's kind of listening in on your conversation. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> Damn, dude! Sudden wolves in the background. You'll hear the sound of like wolves and screaming from the inside. <laughs> ah! It's got me leg. It's got me. Oh, it's got me bollocks. Oh, well, sucks to suck, my dude. Mm. Uh, quick question for ya. Yes, dear. Um, really weird question, so mm. I apologize. Did a chicken come through here? We've got in lots of chickens come through here. Oh, in a no, hat. No, like it would have been wearing a hat. Uh, okay. Like, um, no. Nah. Um, mm. if you... Mm. You seem like you're a bit short on coin, love. I couldn't help but notice you're packing some pretty serious instrumentality. Yeah. I mean, I do have a flute. I mean, I'm just hold up my hand. Yeah, kinda. Um, yeah, word on the street is that um, one of the night's headliners, the nefarious duo, uh, had to call in sick due, uh, due to a case of chicken pox. How oh, unfortunate. <laughs> if you're in the mood for a little bit of um, gladiatorial combat, you could probably get in that way. 
Oh, I, I don't know if I know anyone who's in the mood for gladiatorial combat at literally all times. Mm. Okay, one. I do. I turn this, this one. one. Right here. This mm. one. Well, there were three three members of the nefarious duo. They, oh, that would make them quite nefarious. They, 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 yes, that's they're the, lying about numbers, even. Yes, they... It's, do you know how to count? I, I think they added on, on Rachel at the end. Um, it was it's kind of a it, it, it's, but that means that we're three people down if you're interested in in, in taking their place so we just have to fight mm -hmm. are we allowed to actually hurt people or are we not supposed I mean, to it's preferable okay we're not supposed to no I mean fight I mean you, you gotta put on a show okay mm -hmm. so it is actually just to don't kill them I'm guessing I mean, we have, I mean, get, try not to kill anyone, kill anyone, but I mean, that's what we've got clerics on hand for. Ah, okay then. Sure. Please, I please, suppose please. I will I've be very much on hand. Do you have a, do you have a team name that I can enter instead of the nefarious duel? Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Oh, we've sort of been workshopping this. Uh. Hmm. Let's Something. See. You're green. You're pretty average. Chicken related. And you're short. Hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being short. I'm only four eleven myself, but I'm on a stool right now. Yes, she. Um. I, mean, I think little known fact: Galate is actually very tall on average for a now. Hmm. Let's debate. Little known fact. Little known fact. Little known fact. Yeah. <laughs> no. known fact. Um, <laughs> Why do I love that? Uh, so, do you have a name or not? I. <gasps> We're the mean green mothers from mm. out of town. Mean green mothers. You know, I'll take it. Sure. I can. Mean. I can. I'm green. You can be mean. Hey, I'm. Oh, right, I'm not green at all. Certainly not. Anyone who would accuse me of being green is all incorrect. Right. So do take this, and she'll hand you all a slip of paper. Take this around the corner uh, to Ed. Ed will get you suited up for the for the match. And then, of course, uh, if you survive, uh, you, your meal's included. Awesome. We get fed too. Yeah, you oh, fed. yeah. If you um, and if you, there's a special, a special thing I should probably tell you. Um, it's it's a tournament. Um, you'll be oh. of course you're, you're swapping in, so you'll bypass some of the earlier ranks um, as a as a surprise newcomer. Uh, but I think um, Ed should be able to break it down for you a bit better. But if you manage, you'll um, uh, you'll dine with the with the Lord and Lady of the House as uh, part of your part of your prize and part of their entertainment. Oh wow! Oh, okay, cool. We're, we're not as up and up on probably polite conversation, so hopefully they don't mind. I can fake it. Are you sure? I've never <laughs> seen you done that before. This. Hey, my etiquette lessons are in the somewhere. Just head around right, the corner and talk to Eddie. Yeah, and they're dusty and covered in cobwebs. I mean, that's also true. <laughs> well, that just makes them more classy and old. Okay, let's go get you something to hit. All right. Around the corner, you will see that not terribly far from you uh, is a guard-manded side entrance. And outside there, uh, barking orders between large puffs of his thick corncob pipe is a gnome with curly red hair and a giant bulbous nose. All right, move that over there. I don't have time for this. Move it over there, or else. Ye, I will bring down the wrath of the goods upon ye. I will squash your bollocks into cheese. Hi, and who the hell might you be? Are you Eddie? I'm Eldheim. Eldheim Gobblenocker. Um, um, we're I'm... subbing in for... Ah, the nefarious do you. Yeah. Hi, hi, and what are your names here? Oh, hand me the piece of paper. Here. Yeah, the piece of paper, let's see. Uh, the, the mean green mother's from the tune. Mm. Yeah. Let's see. 
Uh, we'll, We've uh, never had to come up with a name for before, so... No, yeah, just... Yeah. Aye, why start now? Exactly, I, I don't know, it's just... I, can, can you fit? No. Yes. Yeah, can you fit? Yeah! Oh! I can! Uh, really? <coughs> yeah. Who keeps letting that dog in here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, she just really wants a fight, that. so, uh... Aye, do you know the rules of a typical, of a typical tourney? No. Yeah. All right. You've got two. You, you've got two fights ahead of you, back to back. If you manage to survive both of them, then you'll take the crown for the night. Of course, there always is the chance that there might be a third fight, whether or not there's time permitting. Just a very dramatic one to throw in at the end, just in case. Aye, that's the whole point here. You were right, going course. to be replacing the uh, nefarious duo. The nefarious duo was three of the wee. Guardious bastards that have ever fought inside of this tent. You better live up to the heap. What kind of fighting do you do? You've got a joint X and you are a big green thing. I guess you probably bite stuff. No, I just punch it a All lot. Right, do you, like, good? Good, let's see if you can punch the things that are going to be before you because there are going to be quite a few things that you're going to have to fight that aren't necessarily what you would normally be fighting in this type of thing. We like to have spectacle. And it's a special night tonight because the owners are in-house. So, you better put up a bloody good show or else I will make sure that your heads will roll all the way down to the constable area. Do you understand me? Hello, right. I cannot have my reputation carnished. But if Rosie well, said, hmm? conveniently, we've got several vicious folks, and we are all, I'm going to drop my illusion, performers. Dad, you're a big bitch. And a cleric of Basir is always entertaining. Don't underestimate us, all right? I, it's a kid's show, though, so if you're going to be a cleric of Basir, please keep all of your uh, your boobs inside of your I'll keep at least two articles of clothing on at all times, unless aye. they get stabbed off. Aye, aye, aye. And one of them better not be a headband. Well, we'll see. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you, you've all got weapons and you've got armor. So you're going to wear some tabards mm -hmm. on top of those to denote that you're members of the... Um, uh, let's see, which team do we have? Uh, let's see, the, the pink team, the green team, the black team, uh, the, uh, the white team. You are going to be part of... You are going to be part of the pink team. Ah, uh, you'll be wearing pink tonight. Oh, matches our names perfectly. Ah, uh, the mean green mo- <laughs> Would you like me to change your name to the Stinky Pinky Mothers? <laughs> you know, I'm not opposed to it. What Stop do you think, Galatea? You seem the most strongly opposed. The stinky Pinky- Are you stupid? Ah, no, I'm quite wise, actually. Uh, but if you like to... have to say they're wise are usually the ones who are the stupidest. Mm, you must say you're wise a lot then. I just like to keep people's skulls in, so if you want to. Right, then you'll get along <laughs> fine, alright? Now get your ass in there. Gorg! Gorg, I... get these get these ragamuffins actually suited up for the night. They're going to be wearing the pink colours. Give them the pink stripes. Mm. A huge hulking human will lead you in and... Mm, happy to help. Uh, you goose put these on. And they'll take you into um, what honestly feels more like a horse stable than anything. It's kind of a green room that's lined with hay, splattered with blood. There are quite a number of vicious individuals that are in line of sight. You can see that there are other cages and obscured areas in this large domed room that are slightly out of sight. In the main area of this restaurant establishment, this, this performance arena, you will hear a scream of pain, and then... <laughs> and then you'll hear a gong. Ooh. I guess George is going. Um, here we go. And he'll hand you some tabards that are sized actually very much to fit you. It seems like they do have gnomes and dwarves and um, half-orgs, which is uh, basically um, cheesy. Yours is going to be a tiny bit short for you because you're... I mean, that just makes it a little bit more daring. It's true. You can wear your arm under these. These are basically just like shawls or uh, ponchos. 
Alright. Oh, so I'm gonna good. make sure that it's belted down in such a way that it doesn't get in my way. Alright. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. Alright. Should and we prepare a dramatic entrance? Do that. either of you want to say anything? Nah. Oh, but it's fun. You can say all you want. I'm just going to hit someone in the face. Right, okay. Right, so would you go and just walk straight 20 paces? Uh, 20 of your paces, he points at Corlin. It should be about right. Um, so that's just roughly... About, about three quarters of yours. Uh, you, you know, walk, I'll follow Corlin. Walk in 20 of yours, 40 of yours, and, um, and just stop. You should be ready for the fight. All right. All right. Do you go? Mm -hmm. All right. Progressing in, you are going to walk down a corridor of quite a long walk for the second time in one day. You'll emerge into the sound of a crowd all around you. Yeah! Yay! Yay! And as you go a bit further, everything is dark all around you. You can see that in the center of this room, you, there is a person. It's a, a tall human man sitting on a chair uh, with steely gray hair, definitely a silver fox, looking down, holding one of those megaphone cord, uh, um, cones in his hand, looks down mm -hmm. at you and glances over about just out of range of your dark vision to his left. Leans over, turns to you, and you, you, you folks ready? Yes. Pull up my shield. Pull up my hammer. Just, let's do it. All at once or individual? So when, when the time is right, you'll know. Well, sounds exciting. I've been in one of these before. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Ladies Fight. and gentlemen, the Friars Fable welcomes you to another event of Carnage here in the third round of our Tournament of Champions. Once again, each night the eight colors are battling out for supremacy. Just before, you have seen the miracle turnaround victory of Dragon Thunder. Let's give it up for the kobolds. With iron teeth, Dragon Thunder! A spotlight will go up roughly the other side of him where you would be. And you see six kobolds raise their shields to the sky and bellow. And on this side, coming from locations out of town, we've got a replacement, a last minute call in to replace the nefarious duo. I am talking about the mean. I am talking about the green. I am talking about the mean green mothers from out of town. <laughs> You're like. Can I roar and make an intimidation roll? Yes, you all may. All righty. Some. 21. 21? Damn. All of 11. This is not a very convincing rar. <laughs> All right. I learned as a young half-orc when oh. visiting my orcish side. Too. That's beautiful. So what <laughs> I would like from everyone is can you please give me an initiative roll as you roar and you may roll initiative with advantage because of Ooh. those intimidation rolls. Excellent. Okay. And 13. I'm just going to simplify my life by having all of the enemies of a type act on the same initiative. So commander, assistant, <laughs> All right, so who else? 20 or above? You. No. Nope. 22. 22, all right. Advantage Four. was nice. Okay, who has... So that's going to be... Yeah, I rolled a one. Oh, to really? Oh, no. Yeah, my oh, total is one. You had advantage. 
Yep. You rolled two ones? Yep. Are you shitting me? <laughs> but I'm I'm really quite hopeful that um, I've gotten it out of my system now and I'll get a 20 or something. <laughs> also, I would like to say that Hannah jo- or Hannah Joestar mm-hmm. in the chat gets the gets the inspiration award of the evening for getting this entire joke. That this is just a medieval times restaurant. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh Hannah. Well, well, just no one, no one, no one mentioned it, so I'm like, I just want to make sure that this is legit. Well, if we broke in, it would be medieval crimes. Medieval, but we're here I was hoping you would. So. I had so many things. You guys would have. Anyway, I'll talk about that later. All right, so All 15 right. or up. 10 or up. 13. Galatea. All right, so Galatea, you are still going to act there. Galatea. Uh, then there is K1 through 3. And then there is K. I one two. Okay. And then there is cheese E. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Let's get ready for bloodshed. And then suddenly a cord will pull him up from where he is sitting, and the battlefield becomes illuminated. And that's when you will see that the crowd has dozens and dozens and dozens. Well, I say dozens, but I mean is hundreds and hundreds. I don't know, I picked a number and went with it. Hundreds and hundreds of people in the crowd cheering and calling to you. And at that moment, you'll see each one of them is segmented at their own table, uh, drinking heavily. But there, in the crown's box, directly to your right, is a gorgeous young girl with blonde hair who fits the description perfectly. And can I get a perception roll off of all three of you? Mm-hmm. 15. 15. At 21. All right. So as you look over there, you will all notice that you can see kind of through the banister and railing in front of her that there is a... There is a backpack kind of laying by her feet. And jutting out of it are a number of things, but one of which is a curling rod, a curling length of wood. And with that, the fight will begin. All right, at the top of the initiative, we have Corlin. Before you, there are six kobolds, these tiny, well, these small creatures, the first of which is a large shielded individual mm-hmm. who begins to prepare to bark orders at his companions, three of which appear to be regular spear-wielding kobolds, a bit stronger looking, a bit more grizzled than you've seen in the past, and then small but knowing. And next to them are something you haven't seen in a while, actually ever, two kobolds with cages strapped to their backs and number of vials and smoking pellets strapped to their waists. What would you like to do? Dangerous. You are about 30 feet from each other. I'm gonna aim for one of the... Are one of the kobolds with the cages kind of on the outside edge? or Basically, right yeah. So looking down, you are here, they are here. Shield is at the back. Three kobolds and, two, and the two kind of forming a pyramid, basically. Alright, I'm gonna go for one of the guys with the cages. Okay, so you will have to spend your movement running around to get to him, uh, but you should be able to do so as a monk. How much distance is it? uh, So that's going to be 40 feet to get to the ones on the side. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay, so why don't you, so dancing out of the range of one of the smaller kobold spears, uh, you will come up next to this kobold with the cage and may make an attack. Okay, I am going to do a strike with my battle axe and an unarmed strike as well. Okay, sounds good. Now, I was reading up on that, and it looks like I should be able to add my dex to both the attack and the damage on an unarmed strike as a monk. Monks are special. Because last time I was told I couldn't add it at all, but the time previous I thought I'd been adding it, and so I went and looked and- Cool. Yeah, pretty sure reading my rules, that's how it interprets. Let's do it. Okay. Wreck him. Okay. Um, so that would be uh, 16 on the battle That's axe, 
and a 15 on the unarmed. Okay. Yes, both good. 15 is good. Rushing forward, okay. you're going to strike twice, bringing your battle axe down and your foot, head, hand. Not sure. I will aim a foot at like a knee area or something. All right, go ahead and roll me damage. Okay, so that is 10 on the battle axe. Okay. And um, what's my thing? So seven on the unarmed. All right, so two strikes. Your, your axe is going to come down hitting him solidly in the chest mm -hmm. um, and your knee or your strike is going to catch him by the knee spinning his leg out and he is far beyond bloodied barely still conscious good first hit there or good first good opening act wow and I, I do I make this as showy as I can while I do it oh still. I'm assuming without like mm -hmm. screwing myself up like I will still roar and... So... But then settle back looking all monkly. <laughs> behind him, the one with the spear eyes you with a ferocious grin and barks in draconic to his comrades, shifts around and attacks you from behind. Okay. What is your armor class? 19. Nat 20. Okay. All right. Ooh. And... Oh, wait, I get two attacks. What am I doing? Uh, that is a... Nope, that's only 18 for the second one. Okay, so... Is... Thank God for Path of the Kensai. <laughs> it's quite good, right? That allowed me to up my AC. Uh, so, that is going to be... 8 points of piercing damage as you are stabbed in the side. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he will call out to his companions to, in Draconic. No one here speaks it, do you? No. no. Just no, I don't think for so. Me. Okay. Mm. Galatea, you're up. All right. I'm going to... Uh, are there any, like, close to me? Or? Directly in front of you are three regular kobolds. All right. I'm going to go after... Um, the cobalt, like, in the middle, like, okay. directly in front of me. Sounds good. And I'm going to take, I'm going to, I would like to rage. Good. That's probably a good time for it. Okay. Question, does flanking exist in 5e? I've forgotten. Yeah, it does. It does, but only if you have special features, usually. Okay. Like, it's. It's not a, just a normal Yeah, you have thing. to have sentinel, I think. Or pack tactics. Okay. Yeah. They like made oh, it. Oh no. Yeah. Kobolds are vicious. Oh no. <laughs> no, I, re I remember. Oh yeah, you almost oh, yeah. died. Yep, from generic. Yep. That was one of our first ones. Yep. Oh, kobolds. Kobolds are so good. They're so cute. I oh. love them. <laughs> All right, so. Oh my God, yeah. No. All right, so what do you do? You rage and you run in. Ah! Snap into a slim jim. I'm with my well, and I'm going to make a reckless attack. Ooh, my favorite. Yes. I'm just making, I'm just making sure I have it up here so I can read it correctly. I'm going to so take that my means that dice. You, you roll with advantage and they get uh, advantage against you in turn, right? Uh, yeah, if they are like, um, like I have a disadvantage on like defense, yeah. basically. But you get advantage on the attack. Yeah. <laughs> Natural twenty. Oh my god. Okay, let's do I this. My. Oh, how do I want to do this? I'm pretty sure. How do you want to do this? Uh, let me roll damage first. Let's let's see I'm what we're. Pretty even. sure. Because it's twenty six to hit, and then it's one d eight plus four. Hang on, where's my d eight? Uh, that's eight points of damage plus two. For how my do you want to do this? <laughs> I'm literally just gonna take my warhammer and just squish like a freaking aluminum can. Oh god, so you you yes. goomba him. Yes, that's fantastic. <laughs> and there is a spray of blood and bone as this cobalt is smashed into the ground. Um he's still alive, right? 
<laughs> Maybe. You Maybe. Know. We'll that's see. what the clerics are for. That's what the clerics are for. Uh, bonus. Wait, no, I rage, so that's my bonus action. Never mind. All right. Uh, with that, the losing. other two kobolds are going to look at you with a with a look of, <laughs> and they're going to take some swings at you. All right. Which, honestly. You're smart. Why not always reckless attack against kobolds since they have advantage on you anyway? There's no disadvantage. Hmm. That's true. All hmm. right. So, do. Uh, does. Really? You get, a, you get higher than he does. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so it's two 17s hit, right? Yeah, those both hit. All right. My AC is 13. Okay. The kobolds dart on either side of you, plunging in at you with their long serrated daggers. You are going to take, uh, from the one on your right, you're going to take six points of piercing damage, turns into three with your rage. And mm -hmm. from the left, you're going to take five points, which turns into two. So that's a total of eight damage. Oh, wait, no, 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 five damage. Total cause... of uh, eight. I said eight damage originally, right? Yeah. Four, three. It's five points of damage. Just yeah, that's it. Yeah. I was oh, like, man. Oh, oh, it's math. Sunday. It's a Sunday math brain. <laughs> Sunday math brain. Okay. Um, Corlin, next to you, one of the kobolds, um, actually the kobold that you struck, uh, reaches into his bag in panic and pulls out a vial at you that he hurls directly at you. Um, he's going to have disadvantage on this. Does this count as a missile? Uh, Yes, it does. Yes! So, so go ahead and roll. <laughs> uh, I have a nine. Uh, well, I have a 14. Okay. He pulls out a vial of smoking liquid and hurls it directly at your face. Uh, I catch you... it and throw it back. Okay, go ahead. And you already did an attack. Uh, so he needs to do a deck save. That is a fail. Um, the jar of alchemist fire explodes as it makes contact with him. Uh, he is going so to take. That's the spend of a key point. He is yeah. going to take uh, three points of fire damage immediately because he's not immune. That's great. Um, boop. So you've got. Uh, and he is engulfed in flame. As he. Ah! Not good! All right. The other one with the cage is going to reach into his bag as well, seeing that there is something uh, happening with his compatriot, but he can handle himself. He's looking at the rampaging barbarian directly in front of him, reaches into his bag with a hooked staff, and thrusts forward a skunk in a cage directly into Galatea's face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Galatea, I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Okay. <laughs> Another natural 20, I'm not yes. kidding. Yes! All right. You <laughs> My have a dice slight... loves me today, I'm so happy. You have a slight cold right now and you just can't smell anything. So... Oh, they're gonna hate us at the table. <laughs> I'm so fucking ready, um, So this skunk is directly, uh, directly in your face. Um, and yeah, it sprays musk at you. You are you are sprayed with musk, but you're like I've had worse. He's fine. Okay. A hug. A hug. Threaten the cobalt. Yeah, it doesn't give you any any defense against the spray. Just okay. Cool. It's just whether or not this bothers you, I guess. Having been sprayed with a skunk before, I can guarantee it would normally bother a person. Uh, can you, you know fling what? the I'm skunk say, back at them? I'm gonna say that the skunk sprays, and instead of hitting you directly, it's gonna hit your hammer. So now you have a stinking war hammer of doom. Oh no. All right. Yeah. That's somehow even worse. Cheesy. That's the, fantastic. There's carnage ahead of you. What do you do? Uh, well, it seems like my buds are slightly wounded, but not terribly wounded. Mm -hmm. So I may not bother doing a healy heal yet. I am going to lunge towards the closest cute little dragon friend and hit them in the face with a mace. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, actually, maybe I'll use a bonus action to do healing word on 
I think Corlin, did you take the most damage or did Um I took Delatea? eight, but don't really worry too much because I've got forty-four. Yeah, okay. I'll do it later. Yeah. Never mind. I still have like it's a just maze time. Onto it for now. I still have thirty-two, I'm good. All so right. I assume I can reach one of them in range? You can. There's one to the left and to the right of Galatea. I think I have a nine to hit. I don't believe I hit. Uh, you do not hit, but you have inspiration you could spend. You know what? Sure. Fuck this kobold in particular. Okay. <laughs> 21? 21 is absolutely head against a kobold. Uh, Mace is 1d6 plus... Five damage. Five damage? All right. Your mace slams into the side of the kobold. Um, and you can see his arm go limp. And he will actually drop his... Uh, his dagger as the blow hits him. He's still on his feet and still snarling at you, but he is definitely bloodied. All right, well, back at the top of the okay. initiative, we have Corlin. Corlin, there is a skunk just to your left, as well as Galatea, who's ripping her way through a number of kobolds. Directly in front of you is this strange kobold that you just lit on fire. And he's not down yet, is he? Uh, he is. You're pretty sure that this fire is going to take him out. Okay, I'll turn and deal with the guy trying to stab, stab me in the back. Okay. And I'm going to smack him with Peacemaker and uh, I guess slice him is a better terminology. That sounds and, great. Uh, I'm going to slice and then I think follow it with a punch in the face. Okay. What'd you get? Nat 20 on the punch. God's sake. Um, That's great. All right. Ryuji! No, he's I feel like I'm doing my, my cleric duty axe. using the axe ones for the two of you. Don't think that hits. The battle axe is going to whiff over his head as he blocks it with his leather shield. Uh, he dodges that, right into the punch. Yeah, he's going to dodge right into the punch. Where's it going? Um, You know what? I'm going to go for his throat. All right. So he's wearing one of those skull caps <laughs> with the flaps, kind of like one of those winter hats. Um, but his throat is widely exposed. Your pit, your eleven punch damage is going to snap nice and center, and deal a solid blow to his trachea. Uh, uh, he manages to roll with the punch though, and doesn't appear to collapse anything. No. So he does seem like he is going to be able to fight with a vicious strength. Uh, do you do anything for move or so on? Um, can I do, like, a disengage and back up a bit? So you can disengage. I would disengage to your left. Okay. That way he's not pinning you against his flaming friend, who still would give him a bonus. Sure. Yeah, I'll move out of the way then. All right. He's going to snarl at you and double down his efforts to try to slash you with his spear. Uh, he rushes forward, and that is a 19 and okay. a 13. Well, 19 will hit then. Okay. Uh, so that is another five points of damage. Okay. As he rushes forward and slashes his spear across your upper thigh. Galatea, you're up again. There's a skunk directly in your face. And two kobolds on either side of you, one of which Cheesy ran up and smashed. All right. Well, I'm going to take my war hammer and go for the, um, is the one, uh, like, holding the skunk, like, not the one that, uh, Cheesy hit, yeah. The one that's holding the skunk is not the one Cheesy hit, but he is directly in front of you because he made a mistake with his life. <laughs> Smack him in the face All with right. a stinky hammer. <laughs> I'm going to take the pointy end of my hammer. Oh, no. And I'm going to go, like, underneath the, uh, the cage holding the... The skunk. Mm -hmm. I'll take the pointy end and just try to hit him like in the side, like underneath his ribs. Let's see how you do. Ryuji, give me strength! Nine. Thirteen to hit? Uh, thirteen is going to just barely be a hit on these guys. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to take my mighty eight. Ryuji, let's roll together. Going to be. What's that? And that's uh, eight, 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 eight. That's a total of fourteen points of damage. All right. So, um, what happens when you go under? 
Tell me what. Tell me how it goes. <laughs> so I like get low. Oh, were you, Jim? Sorry. I get low and just like with full force swing my warhammer into the side of him okay. and just like try to like flick him across like the battlefield. Essentially. All right, uh, you nice. are going to do so, uh, hurling him a, a good ten feet out of the way, and he's going to come down on his pack of mysterious things. Um, landing so hard, you're going to hear the sound of a bunch of glass breaking, and then immediately, and he's going to start screaming as he is swarmed by a wasp nest that he had ready to throw at you. And he's going to run off the battlefield, screaming and crying. Bees. Yeah, not bees. Yeah, the bees. Not the bees. Anything with the bees. Uh, not the bees. Cobalt Nicholas Cage. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, now it is Cobalt number one and two, which are still up. Um, Cobalt number two is going to pivot out of the way and try to stab Cheesy from behind as the one uh. directly in front of her tries to do the same from the front. Uh, Cheesy, what is your armor class? Is it 15? My armor class is 16, assuming I am still holding onto my shield, which I think I am. You are. Yeah. The one in front of you flails a knife at your face. <laughs> Twice. That is uh, no fresh air for me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, someone's mowing. The outside. neighbor is mowing the lawn. Oh, oh welcome shoot. to Do you summer. not have any like allergy pills or anything? This is the no, noise. No, it's not so much that. It's just as loud. Can you guys uh, hear right, it over my I mic? Because I had the windows open because it was warm mm -hmm. in here. Okay. No, I can't hear it. All right, so uh, cheesy. As you are being attacked from the front, uh, there is a sudden pain in your back as two knife stabs. Uh, puncture you from behind. The one who dances behind you is going to deal five points of damage with his first slice, and the second one's going to be a critical hit for a total of eight. Hey, I am going to scream in pain because that's the worst. It is the worst. All right, the last kobold is going... Or pardon me, the last kobold with a cage is going to take a D... Oh, he's dead. <laughs> the flaming kobold <laughs> drops to the ground and stops screaming. But he does put himself out as he falls. So at so, least that is less charred than to res. That's true. Uh, cheesy. Your turn. You are flanked by a pair of kobolds. Galatea has stepped forward and has made short work of one of these kobold inventors. I don't know. They're kind of weird. Um, another one of the kobold inventors has fallen to the ground and your friend Corlin is facing a rather buff kobold with a shield about 15 feet ahead of you. Well, the jerk who just stabbed me is going to get, assuming I hit, booped with Inflict Wounds. All right, let's do it. Nice. So this is a melee spell attack, right? I think so, at top mm -hmm. range. My character sheet has that actually pre-calculated for me. It's nice, right? Let's see if I can actually find it on here, though. I believe in you. Inflict Wounds? Inflict no, wounds. I have that. It's the, the melee touch attack. I can never remember this. I've been playing um, Pathfinder recently. Mm, so basically, you just do a spell attack. Yeah, make a melee spell attack against a creature you can reach. On a hit, the target takes 3d10 necrotic damage. So it's, yeah. you do an attack with wisdom instead of strength or dex. Yeah. Then I have a 15 to hit. <laughs> yep. Okay, tell me what happens. Uh, well, let's do 3d10 necrotic damage. These poor cobalt. 3d10? Yeah, it's 16. You want to narrate this for me? <laughs> uh, I mean, he might melt as I scream at him in rain. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm going to turn around angrily and scream, I will crush your bones to make my bread and boop him in the face. Um, You, you will boop him in the face and he will step back, wiggling his nose. <laughs> and then suddenly he'll just slump down like all of his bones have dissolved. <laughs> Right, he'll be okay, right? <laughs> okay. I'm so bad at this. Actually, your spell attack mod is proficiency plus wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So. Right. Yeah, that's that's, that's what total. that's what I meant before. Just like basically just replace whichever staff with your. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So does that turn that into a seventeen? That would turn it into a seventeen. Oh, I misled you. I'm sorry. Uh, Galatea is there? Corlin, you're up. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going after Shield, dude. I'm gonna do the same thing. I will use my axe 
And uh, I think I'll try and kick him as well. All right. That 20 again. <laughs> are you shitting me? How are you <laughs> like this? She's like this in every game. Watch our werewolf game where she gets 16 successes on an attack. Gosh. To be fair, that is, no, that's not attacks generally. That's generally stuff that I have nine again on. No, it was a sneak attack with rote with with. Um, uh, well, that's because I had a special ability that my stealth added to, and Do like doesn't matter. Still mad cheats. Good job. Still had nine again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is that one. Um, so that's so it was a nat twenty on my kick, so ten damage, and okay. I got higher than an 18 on the attack for the battle axe. And that's a hit. So that is 11 damage. God. Okay, so if yeah. my calculations are correct, he's 32 hit points down right now. Um, you're going to rend your axe across his flank and midsection uh, and kick him directly in the wound as soon as it opens, um, causing him to drop his shield as he steps back and grabs his spear with both hands, um, he's going to roar and frenziedly charge you, okay. uh, giving you one and two solid hits with it. Nice. Uh, that is going to deal. Oh, actually, wait, he's upgrading his dice type. I'm always impressed when they manage to beat my 19. It always feels like that oh, Kensai thing is Right, that is going to useful. be... Uh, with his frenzied attack, that is going to be a quite damaging uh, 16 points of damage. Meh. As he jams his spear into both of your thighs. Gouts of blood hey. erupting into the air as he pulls back to strike again. But it's not his turn, it's Galatea's turn. Alright. So, how many kobolds are around me? Uh, there is one, uh, there is one fairly damaged one to your left that Cheesy is in combat with, and then there is one shielded one directly in front of you, uh, about ten feet. I trust Cheesy okay. to handle herself. You should I'm not. The... <laughs> She'll be fine. I let people fight their own battles. I'm gonna go after this big mother effing shield. Nice. Cool. So you're just going to rush forward? Rush forward, reckless attack, Okay. smack him. I'm going to try to um, kind of go around him, like to the, to the side of him. Okay. So I can take my hammer and smack the back of his head with like the flat end of it. All right. This is why barbarians are terrifying, because I just want to point something out real quick. You rush forward preparing your attack. As you do, you leave yourself open to the kobold that Cheesy is fighting, who slams a dagger right into your lower back, pu puncturing one of your kidneys. Um, Love it's it. a critical hit. And after Ooh. your damage reduction, you are going Ooh. to take three points of piercing damage on a crit. Oh no! <laughs> My kidney got a scrape. <laughs> Oh god. All right. So rushing forward, ignoring that attack, that an opportunity attack, you rush up and go ahead and give it to me. Okay. Twenty-three to hit. <laughs> yep. That's probably a hit against a kobold. <laughs> <laughs> if there, if you never, okay, chat. If you ever fight a kobold and a 23 doesn't hit, run. That's not a kobold, that's a tiny oh, dragon. Just go. <laughs> yep. I fucking love kobolds, man. I kind of feel guilty hitting them as hard as I am, but at the same time, it's fucking great. It's whack-a-mole with kobolds. I love that they gave them dog noses. <laughs> me too! That's kind of why I'm like, oh no. <laughs> All right, so let me roll my fucking damage. Like, it's like they're the goodest boys. But uh, it's going to be uh, eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. He's still on his feet somehow. As you slam your axe into his, or pardon me, you're an axe. You slam your maul against him from behind, uh, buckling him forward. But he manages to hold strong. And the one directly in front of Cheesy snarls. Oh, you better put his on? I have a bonus action. 
Oh, you have a bonus action. Okay. Oh, because I, I, I rage, so I'm already raging, so I still got a bonus action. What do you do? Bonus action. I'm going to flip my hammer around and try to skewer the back of his head. Oh, because it counts as a double a double weapon, right? Huh? Mm okay, let's do it. I'm raging. Oh, no, I didn't say reckless. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> you said you you can you can reroll that if you want because you've been on reckless attack this whole time. Okay, all right. If you if DM allows. I'll do. I mean, you're 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 Galatea is crazy. I'll allow it. <laughs> Nuts! I love it. Uh, twenty-one. <laughs> Once again, if a kobold isn't hit by a twenty-one, run. <laughs> the DM's trying to kill you. In fact, maybe run as a person. So how does this go? Another nine points. <laughs> okay, so I can do this or you can do this. Your call. Um, you go ahead and describe because I'm just trying to like swing and just skewer like the base of his skull. That's exactly how I was going to say this. So um, directly in front of you, uh, Coraline, uh, this this kobold rushes forward, stabs you twice in the either thigh, raises his spear overhead viciously, when suddenly you hear this tiny scream behind you, a gout of blood erupts into the air as um, he just like, it just flies out of his crushed ribcage from behind, and as he's screaming you're going to see the tip, the, the pointy end of Galatea's spear uh, go right through his mouth. I'm gonna peek out from behind him. You good? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and he's going to collapse to the ground. And you are going to hear... Ding, 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 ding! We have a winner! Everyone cheers for you. The crowd goes freaking wild. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a round of applause as they move on to the final round against... Gormash and the Dukes of Iniquity. No. I will move over to no. GZ and ask for healing. <laughs> tell your tell your servers that it's time to have another drink, and we will resume in one minute. Is the announcer down here? He's kind of hovering above you on some wires. Are the kobolds gonna be okay? Probably not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's cool. that's fine. Um, risks. And I guess let's use some of this prep time to heal. Okay. I'm pretty good, but depends what you got. Okay, I mean, you're a little bit dented. I have 29 out of my 37. I'm just going to shut my window real quick. I am 29 out of 44 at the moment. Yeah, 29 that's is my I usual like hit points. The dog does not like that lawnmower. No. So, okay. Captain DM. Oh, Captain DM, who could not hear me. Well, sorry, I had my head Hello, on. I think I'm going to do, assuming they're not healing us as a kind jester, if they don't seem to be. They are not. Then I will do a prayer of healing for the three of us. Um, so we would each gain 2d8 plus spellcasting ability modifier. All right, go ahead and roll that. Do uh, 15. 15 Eat. points each. That sounds good. Back to full. That heals me. I can do this. All right. Does anybody else need healing? I think. And then, uh, Corlin, are you okay or do you still need a little more help? Um, I'm at. I've taken four. I have 14 damage left on me. Okay. So that's not too, too bad. Hmm. Definitely the disadvantage of not being a Healy cleric is that I only have so many Healies. <laughs> oh, what the heck was that thing called? I could do something very silly, though. Oh. Right. So the debate here. You know what? No, Cheesy's dumb. She's going to do it. Okay. And you know what? Gosh darn, she cares about you, Corlin. Oh, dear. That's, that's, that's making me nervous now. I yeah, like it. Should. Um, so warding bond. Okay. Is the other um, level two spell that's ready to go here. Um, and I think the components are expensive as hell, but hopefully covered in this game. Uh, essentially, it will give the target 
It's the same as a uh, World of Darkness ability. I can't remember the name of either. But it gives the target a plus one bonus on AC and saving throws and resistance to all damage. And each time that the target takes damage, I take that damage. Oh. Oh, dear lord. <laughs> okay. That's intense. So it was plus one on saving and... Uh, and AC. Yeah, plus one to your AC. AC and resistance to damage. Okay. So that... And Jeezy will explain this very briefly. Are you going to tell me that it'll do you damage instead? Yeah, essentially. If you get hurt, I get hurt. So don't get hurt. Also, DM, yes. I just realized I should have been adding plus one to all of my um, rolls for my damage because of my modified Warhammer. Oh, you're right. Well, that sucks for all of those dead kobolds. <laughs> I know, it's like... <laughs> Retroactively, it really doesn't matter, but I'm like, I forgot about that. So just don't forget in this upcoming fight. Yep, beautiful. I'm going to write that down for myself. Um, do you mind if I make like a custom item in D&D Beyond to like put on Not the Not even a little bit. Put a ribbon on it. Cool. I like that you have Kermit the Frog. Yeah, those are all Alejandro's emotes. Oh, really? I want it. I want it so bad. Can he do a Kermit the Frog voice? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, wanna... he has a he has a Kermit puppet at home, and he like clucks around with it. Oh, it's great. I, I wanna <laughs> I wanna have a Kermit off. Hey, I have a free on July first for those watching. I have a Goblin Slayer event on July first, and I'll be at the house. So really, yeah. Nice, your new house. I'm so excited. Nice. And my my uh, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount book is at the house. I'm so excited. Nice. I still haven't cool. got that one. I bought it. I'll let you know how I like it. Nice. I really... I, I want to run some games with yeah, it. Yeah, let me know. I, yeah. So if you're done... I will house, totally I'm play a grung... See if Alejandro wants to play a grung alongside me and we can both do Kermit the Frog voices and be grungs. Oh my god. <laughs> on it, Once I'm at the house, like, you could get us both on at the same time because he likes to play with people around. Well, we'll see how that... <laughs> I'm just like No, it sounds good. I was making a reference about Tasha not making it to game today. I know. <laughs> uh we can change that. We can I can just put Alejandro on top of Obsidia. Or I'll have a play Obsidia. <laughs> Alright. With that, the lights grow dark again. The announcer riles the crowd up. Announces you as the current incumbents. The crowd cheers, really enjoying themselves. And you can see that the the nobles table in particular pays attention to you. And you'll notice that the girl seems... There are bits of like mascara streaking on her face. She looks like she should be eating a pint of ice cream right now. Mm. And you so much so that you miss them recalled the name of the challenging team but you do not miss the sound of their roars uh, just one moment let's do a contested intimidation roll do we have to roll something for that yeah if you want to do intimidation like you did last time yeah totally okay so i am looking oh. i have a 22 23 no. with that being a natural 20. Really? Okay, so you will Ooh. manage to... You hear a roar in Orcish that goes... I will roar back in Orcish. It actually does surprise <laughs> them a little bit. You will all have advantage on your initiative this round. Well, Something along the lines of like... Orcish equivalent of like, eat my shorts. Okay. And his <laughs> their call was break the flesh... Break the bones and eat the flesh. Yeah, I'm just like, just It's, it's typical orcish. <laughs> I The orcs in this world generally are are very maligned for no good reason. Um, and they're actually very prone to doing things like hakas. All right. So like, it's definitely intimidating, but the fact that you can do it back is also intimidating. So go roof. Yeah, and I'll do the full like roar with gestures and the whole lot. All right. I don't know, maybe it's even like kind of clan based. So like, we could even recognize each other's clients from it. Absolutely. Hmm. Um, so everybody roll me initiative, please. 
Okay, so... 19 this time. Oh, 18. Right. 17. So you are the leader. Nice. And We're all up high. You are... Yeah, okay. So there's only three of you when I built this fight. So there are four orcs directly in front of you. Uh, let's see. I'm going to count down. Who got above 20? Who got... Y'all said. So who got 19? I got 19. Okay. Really? Wow, that's a hell of a turnaround. Yeah, I rolled a 19. <laughs> I got an 18. Okay. So 17. My... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Galatea, and then it's going to be... And then... Then those two eyes, and then then it's just a typical orc. I guess he's just a typical orc. Orc, orc. All right. So directly ahead of you, let me explain what you're seeing right now. Um, directly ahead of you, you see two very thickly tusked orcs. Behind them, directly behind them, you see a hulking, hide-encased brute with um, what looks like the mandibles of some almost prehistoric creature serving as a pauldron. He's holding mm. a giant great axe in his hand and appears to have some semblance of not only strategy, but a great deal of intelligence behind his eyes. Uh, directly behind him, you will see that there is... An orc priest. And all of you can make me a uh, religion roll right now. Uh, Corlin, you will be able to get this with advantage because of your orcish background. 14. 19. 19? Uh, 17. All right. Uh, what you will notice is all four of these... Uh, all four of these individuals are wearing streaked black face paint across their eyes. Um, Galate, you've seen this before, but you can't place exactly what this is from. And as you're looking at it, you're, you know it's bad. Uh, Corlin and Cheesy, both of you will immediately recognize that this is a sign of people who have pledged themselves to Eominger, the Titan of Wrath. Oh, fun. Uh, so these guys are bound to be tough. Enjoy your boss fight. And uh, Cheesy, you're up. There are two orcs directly in front of you brandishing war hammers and war hammer and war axe. Well, I think I'm going to upgrade this one to use a second level spell slot because it's four of them, right? There are four of them. So I think the smart one over here is to actually cast Bane. Okay. So in this case, up to four creatures of my choice that I can see must make charisma saving throws. Um, I guess at my spell save DC, which I'll grab in a moment. Okay. Um, and any target that fails whenever they make an attack or a saving throw before the end of the spell, which lasts about a minute or until I get mulch, um, roll the d4 and subtracts it from the attack or saving throw. Right. Which is super inconvenient for you, but really convenient for us. It's not. Just got to remind me of what it does. Okay, so this is going to be boss man. This is going to be priest guy. And the two white dice are going to be the normies. I'm guessing it's just at spell save DC, which I think is only 13. All right, so... Spell save... Yeah, because it's um, 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom mod. Yeah, so it should be 13. Okay, so that is uh, the leader succeeds, and so does one of the orcs in the front, but both others will fail. Okay. So I will mark that and that, and this is a D4. Yeah, one D4. All right, so you call a bane down from Basir upon them. Uh, the two orcs are about 30 feet in front of you, like the, the vanguard, or not the vanguard, the, uh, the sentinels out front. Corlin, you are up. Okay. Um, I will target one of the ones in front then. All right. What do you do? Um, gonna, I'm assuming he's within 40 feet, so I'm gonna just move up to melee range, avoiding like, of course, attacks of opportunity, mm -hmm. and uh, smack him with a battle axe and a headbutt. Okay. Sounds good. Go ahead and roll me your attack. 
so that is where's my numbers there they are uh 25 for the battle axe yep and 16 for the headbutt those are two hits okay so that will be 10 damage on the battle axe and eight on all right the headbutt okay so that uh how do you how's it go tell me what happens holy shit um i'm going to Corlin's gonna get up in front bring her battle axe down into like right in here mm -hmm, and hit. you just have to kind of pull him forward and down and headbutt it all right you are going to smash the front of his face in and he is going to pass out on the ground uh bleeding profusely from the gouge you've taken out of his chest uh and one of those orcs is down uh, that was not the one that you baned, Cheesy. What was the total wow. on that? 18, yes. exactly his hit points. Really convenient. Holy shit. Yes! All right, Galatea, what do you do? All right, I'm going to target the spellcaster, the priest-looking dude. Okay, he's kind of at the back right now, so he's about about 45 feet away from you. No, I can't get to him. I'm only... <laughs> I have little legs. I'm only, I have only 25. Do you have javelins or anything? No, okay. I don't. <laughs> Just, just these. <laughs> okay. Just these guns. Um, well, with teamwork, you could become the javelin. Honestly, I could. <laughs> I can Gimli this. Do the fastball special. Um. Okay. <laughs> uh, are there orcs within? There's one. Um, basically, there's the three of you. Okay. And there are now three of them, which are basically orc at thirty feet. Orc commander at 35 feet, orc caster at 45 feet. Smartly staying a little bit back. He obviously looks like a caster. That's not like super, <laughs> super cheesy. Okay, actually, um, I can get to the one within 30 feet because my. Uh, you have reach, right? My reach for my uh, weapon is five feet. So that gets me to him. All right, so rush forward at the second orc and give me your attack. I'm gonna dart forward. I'm going, because I'm small and he's a big fucking orc, I'm gonna take the pointy end of my. <laughs> I'm about to hurt you so bad, Jelly. I'm so sorry. Control! Um, <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm gonna take it and go up the butt. Up the butt. Give me an attack to go up the butt. <laughs> Done, On the dragons, first everybody. Date too. Um, first, Natasha missed the best. That, uh, bonus the action rage. Yep. Bonus action, I'm raging again. You always rage when you go up the butt. That's just implied. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so bonus action rage. So then um, I'm going to take this one reckless. Okay, take it reckless up the butt. <laughs> Damn it, Tasha. Oh, I missed the best one. 22 to hit? Probably yes. Probably you got 22 up his butt. I don't I don't know about you, but he's feeling 22. <laughs> oh, oh. The chat just oh us. 11 damage on that. Question mark, question mark, question mark. All right. Uh, how much damage? 11. Um, okay. Uh, that doesn't kill him, but you solidly and savagely rend his rectum. Uh, so I am, you know, wrecked him, damn near killed him. Uh, he screams and with all of his might is actually going to jump initiative above his boss to take a swing at you. God damn it. My AC is 13. Okay. He's gonna hit you. He's gonna you know what? I'm gonna re I'm gonna reroll. I gave myself advantage because of your disadvantage. But I Oh shoot, I realized that this whole time I didn't have my chainmail equipped, but if it's 13 to hit, call it. No no, just... no no, I'm gonna reroll because I'm pretty sure having a, a something shoved up your ass will give you disadvantage. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a hit. That is a hit. Alright. Okay. So he's going to roar with his full might and bring down a great axe atop you for a total of 11 points of damage, which halves to five. Oh, fucking worth it, dude. Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, with that, the... 
Okay. The <laughs> orc captain at the back, the hulking, hulking man, is going to clench down on his um, on his great axe and is going to rush forward to actually to write to both of you uh, and is going to take a swipe at each of you. So that okay. is... Wait, the left says bonus. I am at 20 AC right now. Okay. So he doesn't get advantage on these. These don't get stabbed. Okay, so... I'm trying. You I haven't yet. You. Corlin. That is two hits. Damn it! That was a 25 to hit both of you. I rolled two 18s. Me I never like get Corlin. the advantage of like bonuses you to my AC. Corlin. It never works out. Okay. I always get hit regardless. I rolled quite well. Um, so sorry. Yeah, but it always it just it always seems every single time I get a bonus to my AC, it never works. Oh. Ever. They always roll higher. I'm sorry. That always happens to me, dude. So you are going to get slammed with this axe for 13 points of damage, Coraline. Okay. So Cheesy, I believe you take 13 points instead. No, I think Coraline has resistance on it. Oh, okay. Yes, resistance to damage. So then I would take half damage. Okay, so that means cool. that that turns to six points of damage. And okay. then uh, he's going to reverse the oh, axe goodness. and slam it into the side of Galatea. Uh, who is going to receive 21 points of damage, which turns to 10. Oh, thank fuck! Um, as he slams Oof. that, he's going to yell and uh, is going to yell in orcish, Attack again! And the one directly in front of you, Galatea, is going to uh, take a swing at you with a 13 is going to hit. because these guys are amazing. Worth it. Uh, that is 12 points of damage, which turns to six. Bless my rage. Your rage, <laughs> yeah. barbarians, are saving us here. barbarians are pretty great. All right, um, at the back of the crowd, the caster type is going to slam his staff into the ground a couple of times. <laughs> and you're going to see a spiritual manifestation of a jagged serrated blade appear Aww. out of the ground Your spiritual weapon. and is going to fly toward you. Spiritual weapon um, I love spiritual weapon when I'm using it so I know, right? I want to the other end. Uh, he is going to advance and run around to he's going to run around to Galatea's side and is going to oh god these guys are great oh and he can move up to you and attack as his bonus action uh he's going to rush up toward you and out of the corner of your eye you're going to see him raise his spear uh but you're going to see it come down uh directly into you with a critical hit uh can you remind me uh christine since i just don't want to look it up spiritual weapon does it act on the same turn you summon it you can. Yes, you can use it as an action. Yeah, so you can bonus action summon it. Okay. He... And then it would be action to use it as well, I think, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So he's, yeah. he's not he's not going to. He just he summoned it. Uh, so, I Galatea, I need you to do me a favor and take five more points of damage after you're having. It's been a while since I used it. And, oh. Oh, I have it here. Yeah, it's a bonus action to move it and attack. And I apologize, I forgot one of his features, Galatea. You're going to take three more points of damage uh, because he has a blessed weapon. And that is after having. How much, how many health do you have left? You're fine. Cheesy, it's a new round and you are up. There are three orcs in front of you. One that is incredibly bruised uh, and then a caster and a powerful war chief. And it, it sort of seems like Galatea is being mulched here, right? Galatea is bloodied beyond belief. You have never seen her this hurt. Yeah, let's do let's do some healies on this. Um, how far away is she? Because I have to be in touch range. She, you can reach up. You can reach out and touch her. Okay, I will. I would like to boop you for a cure wound, which I will bump to a second level spell slot. All right, oh. do it. Also, uh, the, ones or test rolls. Uh, ones or test rolls. Okay, that sounds good. Just checking the day. Just, just checking to make sure they work. 
Uh, oh, so far I have an eight and a seven. Oh, yes. Yes, good. Good, and I believe you add your casting mod uh, to that. So it is, so then it would be, what? What the heck is that, 18? Eight and seven's 15, 15 plus, so yeah. that's 18. So you're gonna heal 18 points of damage, Galatea. Uh, I'm also gonna bonus action healing word myself. Okay. That was smart. Good idea, good idea. Yeah, that was the whole strategy with giving um, Corlin the thing so that I could keep myself technically alive for a moment. Nice. <laughs> Corlin. Um, I'm going to aim for that war chief. All right, the war chief okay. is directly in front of you now. He's an easy target. All right, battle Kelly, I'm healing six. You're healing six. on my headbutt, probably. It worked last time. You've got to be shitting me. Running the spells. Did you roll? Two. Not 20s. <laughs> I nat 20 the unarmed strike and the battle axe at the same time. What brand of microwave do you use to get your dice working like? <laughs> I know! I bought Hey, one of these sets you bought from Kickstarter. Oh, wait, is it the Kickstarter? It's one of the gem dice. Oh, the, I'm using those, and those have been mulching Hayden pretty well, too. So I've been using the amethyst oh, ones. Y'all. <laughs> All right. They're pretty, though. All right, so they are very pretty. Roll me damage. Okay. Nice, max damage on that. Okay, so that is twelve on the headbutt. Okay. Ooh. Um, and eighteen damage on the battle axe. Oh my god. In two blows, you take this orc, this orc, like, um, this crusher of Yeomanger and slam into him with your might, dropping him from fully healthy to bloody in a single hit. Well, Ooh. in a single pair. Of he should find this incredibly attractive. <laughs> you know what? Make this me, per make me like a persuasion a roll. Proposal. Make me a persuasion <laughs> roll with strength instead of charisma. Oh, can it be dex? That's uh, what I'm using as a monk. No, it's either strength or charisma. Okay, well, um, I will use strength then. Uh, that's 21. Nice. Uh, he will give you a look and raise one solitary eyebrow, which is where you realize you are facing Dwayne the Orc Johnson. <laughs> He's quite an attractive orc. Basically just picture Dwayne Johnson with thicker skin and giant tusks. All right. Got charisma sixteen. This is early, early the that. rock, early the rock, like walking tall rock. I'm not right. gonna stop her from trying to kill him, but Galatea, directly in front of you is the orc that you violated, um, and then, <laughs> god damn the eyebrows, um, and then uh, directly past him is the is the boss monster that is fighting with Corlin and flirting with Corlin. Everyone's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Except Corlin. Neither Corlin. Yeah, neither neither is he. Grumpsh is fine. So Dwayne. <laughs> I'm gonna go after the one that I already violated. Alright, you might as well finish the fight. Oh, well, finish the job. So I'm going to reckless attack. <gasps> because fuck it. Why not? You might as well. <laughs> might as well. Oh, um, actually, before you decide on that. Um, I do want to remind you the caster also ran up and is at your side, so you could attack either the orc or the or the druidy caster type, who did a decent amount of damage to you. Yeah, and the caster will get two oh, yeah, attacks no, with spiritual weapon next time. Yeah, no, you're right. Fuck this caster because that's what yeah. I was going for originally. Sorry, I forgot but that he wasn't casting at range because we're not using a board today. So. No, that's totally fine. Thank you. All right. Um, actually, then all right. So this fucking bitch, he's gonna get a hammer to the face, okay. or as high as I can get it. Okay. <laughs> the Still reckless. Somewhere. The solar plexus, just draw all that, push all that air out. Mm. Collapse the chest. 18 to hit. 18 to hit. And do you want to roll your what? bonus attack too? Uh, yeah, I will do that as well. I'll just do this one. Uh, so that's Seventeen to hit on that one. That's a hit. Okay, so I'll just roll damage for both. Gimme, gimme. So 
13 points of damage total. 13 points of damage. All right, you are going to slam your axe into... Oh, pardon me, you're, I always think you have an axe because you're a barbarian, because that's that's classist of me. Um, you are going to slam your hammer into the side of his jaw, knocking several of his teeth loose, and then skewering him uh, probably in, like, the leg somewhere. Oh, yeah. So that's going to deal a significant amount of damage to him. Uh, he glares down at you and is going to lash out with his spear again. Uh, and then... Oop. Okay. Uh, that are two misses. Those are two misses uh, because of your curse that you placed on him, Cheesy. Good job. Oh my god, bless Bane. Missed by one point on two dice because I have advantage. Nice. Oh my oh, god. Oh, that's great. Bane. Oh, I always forget how much I love Bane. All right, spiritual. Yeah. And also, as your local cleric who is almost out of spell slots, please don't get hit by Bane. <laughs> the spiritual weapon whizzes right in front of your face, flying off into the distance, um, and then turns around with an urt and starts arcing back toward you for next round. But it missed as well because with spiritual weapon, I got a seven thanks to your Bane. All right, the orc captain that you just slammed into is going to roar and try to hit you again, Corlin. Uh, okay, he has to beat 20. He has to beat 20 now. Okay. That's what it was last time. Because of Alexa's bonus. Oh, that's true. So I, I got like 18s on the last one, so. Okay, nice. so that's... Yeah, my armor class is normally 17. Okay. But because uh, I have hit, a Kinsai weapon. Oh! Yes, one hit, one miss. Okay. So he made 20 on one of them? He got a, a, he got 22 on one of them, and he got a, nice. an 18 on one of them. That could have been way worse. You are going to take 14 points of damage, which turns into 7 points of damage. So he Sorry, cheesy. blitzes toward you, okay. slashes at you with one of his axe swings, and then brings it down directly into your hip. Uh, causing a flare of pain, but it doesn't go as deep as it could. And with that, he's going to turn around and yell. Let me see if this recharges. Nope. Hit him again! At which point, it, they don't really appear to be paying attention. <laughs> uh, the orc directly in front of you, Galatea, is going to see your caster right behind you, is going to move through your sweat for threatened square to try to strike her. Go ahead and give me an opportunity attack. Ooh. That was probably not worth his time. <laughs> 15 to hit? 15 to hit. It hits? Yep. So this is the last baby orc. Oh wait, no, I, ran, I rolled the wrong dice. I was like, that's a high number for a D8. Yeah, a D20 would do that. No, I, I rolled a D10. A 10? All right, so... Um, Eight, nine, uh, it would be a total of 10, actually. 10? All right, yeah. so um, after stabbing into the leg of the caster, you hear movement behind you. And without even looking, you reverse and swing your maul back, cracking this orc in the back of the head, and he's going to go down at Cheesy's feet. There are only two orcs you. left. Top of the round with Cheesy. So Cheesy- I'm try really hard to stop using spell slots. Cheesy, the um, way the battlefield is set up right here, you are here. Galatea is here. Caster orc is here. Over here is Corlin and Dwayne the Orc Johnson. Well, you know what? The caster orc could always get hit in the face with a mace. That's true. He could. Well, we'll see if it works. He's gonna try for it. Uh, oh, hey, guess what? I actually have a nat 20. Oh! Okay. Give it, give it. so many nat 20s this fight. I know, I'm so happy. <laughs> give it, give it. We are bringing the spectacle. Mm. Um, up to the it's occasion. not the most exciting crit roll. Um, Ones or test rolls? Eight. Eight? All right. Uh, slamming in. What do you do with this? Do you just run up and just whack him with your mace? Oh, basically, she'll be a little bit dainty about it. Like she's trying not to step in, you know, the blood and the gore on the floor in front of her from the dude who just melted due to my short, angry friend. 
to sort of cautiously step over that and do a little bop on the head. <laughs> Corlin. Um, I'm gonna take another swing at War Chief, dude. All right. Okay, so that is um, 20 to hit with my fists and 20 to hit with my axe. All right, so natural? No. Okay. I, I will say, and I will be very excited. That is if I two get hits. That. Go ahead and roll me damage. Ooh, he's. This is gonna hurt him. Awesome. That is max damage. Uh, so that's. 12 on the battle axe. The lady? Okay. And 8 on. I think I will headbutt him. All right, you're going to headbutt him, smashing his... He has a very flat nose, being an orc anyway. Um, but you're going to hear something shift inside of his head as you collide with it. And he's going to stumble back. And that's when you'll notice that one of his tusks is actually cracked off of the top. You've actually broken one of his tusks. He looks back. He is wobbling on his feet, still up, but very wobbly. Um, you think that next round you've got him if he doesn't take you down. Of course... Galatea. You can't right now. You can't right now. Galatea's in the way. Well, also, Cheesy's taking my damage. Oh, that's <laughs> he hasn't true. hurt me at all. <laughs> so, Galatea, what do you do? So, the caster's still beside me, right? They're still both up. The caster is directly next to you with a spear directly pointed at your chest. All right. Well, I'm going to take... What? What? <laughs> Okay. Let's still look. And it's not, not going up the butt. But I am going to try to jam the pointy end of my uh, hammer mm. right into his nose. Okay. Just full swing. Just, All right, just go do ahead. a little jump. <laughs> jump and lift. Oh, no. 14. 14 is not enough. Does anybody have inspiration? I do no, have inspiration. I need my fucking inspiration dice. Yeah, spend it. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be. I can't count today. Uh, that's eighteen to hit. That's a hit. Okay. 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 Oh, please roll high. Oh no. Uh, it's five points of damage. Five points. But bonus action, gonna attack again. Okay. Um. And just try and just like pull back and clock him on the other side of the jaw. All right, go ahead. Oh, mm -mm. I rolled a two. So that's All gonna right, be you crack his nose just. You almost don't think you're going to, but you pull it and stab in, smashing his nose against the side of his face, um, sending a splurt of blood down to meet you. And uh, as you take the second swing, he's actually going to grab his nose, which is going to cause your hammer to, like, your maul to skim over his head rather than crushing it. Ooh, he is still... You're decimating his hit points every hit. Oh, it's so good. Go down, mother... <laughs> All right, uh, directly in front of you, um, the orc chief roars and uh, Corlin is going to yes uh, you're not being hurt by any of his strikes really are you nope okay um, oh, no. so he is going to the crowd roaring around him he is going to take a mighty swing at you uh, mm -hmm. with a 17. Nope. And seeing you dodge out of the way, he's going to give you this smirk. <sighs> Turn and is going to grab his great axe, whip it toward you. And as he, you think he's coming down to smack you in the side of the head, he pivots into a full hip swing and hurls his great axe into Galatea. Galatea, my friend, you are going to take 16 points of damage, halved to eight. Oh, thank God. As a 
dwarven great axe flies across the battlefield into your God. hip. And he is going to yell again. And it doesn't recharge. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Um, well, and he just threw his weapon away, so. Uh, he did. Uh, the, the caster is going to take this opportunity and stab at Cheesy, since they are basically forming a V, and his spiritual okay. weapon is going to sneak up on Galatea from behind and try to strike her. So, Cheesy! So my AC is 16. Oh, I rolled a 16 exactly. Well darn, my bones. Your bones! <laughs> uh, Cheesy, you are to going to do me the honor of taking... 10 points of damage. Ouch, that sucks. All right, and Galatea, an 18, 21 is gonna hit you from behind. Spiritual weapon. It's only a D8, I think. Yeah. Uh, that is going to... I guess he gets his casting bonus as a damage bonus to that, doesn't he? Or is it just a flat bonus? I was always adding my wisdom mod, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's your wisdom modifier. Well, take three points of damage, Galatea as you get stabbed in the ass by a spear. Fuck! Your jeans, they're ruined. How will you ever keep your wallet back there? Yeah, I'm wearing little <laughs> shorts. There wasn't much. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we are at the beginning of the round with Cheesy again. Well, my poor spell slots. Um, this guy might actually wreck me, so let's try to inflict some wounds on him. Okay. Do 20? 20 is an absolute hit. Uh, so then I think that is 3d10 necrotic damage. If you don't roll three ones, tell me how this goes. I rolled an 18, I think. All right. So tell me what negative 15 damage looks like. Uh, it probably looks like someone imploding. All right. Uh, like a tiny black hole. <laughs> the orc is there, calling down spiritual vengeance, and then a moment later, there's the, the satisfying yeah. sound of his helmet, his little skull cap, striking the ground. Yeah. And then Cheesy his... will scream in pain and rage and then just smack him with it. All right, and Corlin. It is your turn. There's only this one unarmed orc directly in front of you. Oh, he chose to throw that away, so he's still getting a battle axe and a headbutt. Okay. Or maybe a knee to the stomach. I don't know. Um, well, I rolled a 19 on... Oh, that's a hit. ...the axe, and I rolled a 15 on, I guess, I don't know, my knee. And what do you um, add to that? Four, so it ends up being 19 that's as well. That's a hit. So... Uh, 10 battle axe and 8 knee. Okay. Uh, your battle axe slams into his side. And your knee um, pretty much slams into his liver from the front. And he grunts and staggers back, falling to one knee, still conscious. But he is, he is not broken, but on the cusp of just blacking out. He is in spare change hit points. Uh, Galatea, you are still enraged. All right. Uh, who's left? Just buddy boy on his knees. All right. He's on his knees. Yep. We're going cobalt whack-a-mole in again. Okay. You have advantage on this attack. Oh, yeah, no, because it's because he's, he's partially prone. <laughs> How'd that go? I think we got 26 to hit. Okay, how does this go? There is no physical way you can roll less than the number of hit points he has thanks to Corlin. It would have been 7 points of damage. Well, he's at negative 5. Well, get wrecked, bruh. <laughs> So you're just going to jump up and squish? I'm just going to leap up 
full force coming down, just letting the weight of the hammer and like my muscles just like crush like the top of his head. All right, you will slam his head down into his chest uh, with a spray of blood and he will collapse to the ground. And with that, the battlefield goes silent. A crowd erupts from the audience. And the announcer smiles. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner! Let's hear it for the mean green mothers from out of town! And as their prize, you will be receiving the 300 gold piece reward and will be joining our fair owners, the Myerscoffs, at the champion's table! We will graciously accept all the applause. All right, as you are getting up to head over there, um, you'll see a number of, of emergency medics come and take the orcs away. Um, and a couple I of... guess, speaking of, I'm going to prayer for healing us with my last spell slot. Sure. Sounds Lovely. great. A couple of casters will come over and, uh, and quickly help you clean up with prestidigitation and healing. Nice, nice. But there's probably blood in my curls. It just evaporates. It mists away into nothing. Nice. I was going to wear that lighter, but all right. And with that, you'll see that... Now, everyone, please enjoy the show and your meal. Um, As that is happening, um, a bunch of people in knight's armor and chainmail come out and start doing fencing drills. Mm. You can see that they've already started to set up jousting arenas as well. It's going to be quite fun. With that, you are That was a led... bit more lethal than I'd hoped. After the murder. You're led over to the uh, the champion's table and the noble's box, where you can see that there are three people sitting there applauding as you enter. Uh, one is a real... Um, it's a bit of a cliche, but a real bear of a man. So we'll say he's a gorilla of a man. A big, broad, bearded, mercantile type with broad shoulders and uh, quite a bit of a belly. It looks like he was the type of guy who would have been a professional sports player or, or knight back in the day but has kind of let himself go to seed from a desk job or a job where he just communicates with people and drinks a lot of beer. Mm. Uh, his wife is a was a pretty woman, but has become more handsome and chiseled with age, long lines, and um, but still has that kind of radiant glow to her eyes that her daughter does, who is by far the prettiest girl in the village. Uh, you immediately recognize that this must be Geraldina, or Geralinda, Geralinda. Yeah, well met, well met. Good, good show of the three of you. Uh, I'm Thank Jorg you. Myerscroft, and this is my wife, Svenja, and my daughter, Glinda. Please, join us. What are your names? Uh, mean Greens? <laughs> we had to come um, up with something on the phone. It was the last thing. I'm Galatea Brookbo. Galatea Brookbo. Hmm, yes. Uh, Brookbo. I have some trade dealings with uh, Brookbo's. Uh, down in the south, uh, uh, some gnomish, uh, some rock gnomes? Yeah. Ah, uh, you, you come from good people if those are your people. <laughs> yeah, no, my father and mother and big ah. wigs. Oh, uh, well, you are welcome at my table. Come, come, come. We have many things. Uh, uh, drinks, drinks, drinks. Many drinks. Uh, big drinks? Big drinks. Big drinks. Uh, mm-hmm. More drinks for the small big one. Drink, preferably. She's bigger on the inside. I know my gnomes. <laughs> it's. Uh, so nice to meet you. Um, uh, what a wonderful show! Where are you from? Uh, out of town. <laughs> I got that from the name. Kind of all over. All over. We don't really stay anywhere too long. We're just adventuring around, seeing the world. Mm, the world is a beautiful place. I myself am a merchant. I do all sorts of mercantile activities, bringing weapons and armor and spices and iron and platinum everywhere. It makes a lot of money. It's very good. I quite enjoy it. And uh, as he starts talking about just mundane things, you'll see that his daughter kind of gets that quavering look to her lip and starts having the thousand yard stare off into nowhere. I might duck a little bit out of this conversation about boring human things and say hello to her. Oh yeah, no, Galatea has zoned out. She's like, mm-hmm. oh, hi. <coughs> hi, Cheesy Bree, how are you? I'm 
Uh, I've had uh, her mother will lean in. She's had better days. It's um been a trying time for her. She's going through um some boy troubles. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm a I. I mean, I'm, a, I'm perhaps a relevant cleric, a cleric of this year. I don't know if I can offer any sort of wise words or advice, but I'm here if you need me. Although I'm a little dented presently. Well, you fought really well. Well, these two fought really well. I just backed them up. Oh, you were great! You kept us standing! I know, that's what I, I do. I with your mace! That was awesome! Hmm. Hello. She... Don't worry, daughter. Everything will be fine. There are other men in the sea. There are other fish in the taverns. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh more beer, please. And he will start trying to wave down someone. Um, as you're sitting there, Corlin should... will try and start girl talk. Essentially. Okay, go ahead and make me a persuasion roll. Let's see how well you do. And you can do it with advantage because I think everybody's helping. Oh yeah, so no. don't fail me now, dice. Nice. Um, persuasion? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that will be 20. 20. Unnatural. All right. Uh, 20, you are going to kind of tell a, tell a little quick joke and uh, basically just like a... I don't know, would you go quick, quick man bash? Would you go quick, like... Exes are like assholes, everybody's got one. Um... And they usually smell like... <laughs> <laughs> Probably something like man bashy and go. So, what uh, what this stick do? Um, yeah, you're right. Guys suck. I um, I moved in with um, I moved in with a guy from the next village. He's you know he had a big reputation. Um, he's, he's really really sweet, but he. He just got really mean. Especially when he drank, he'd flirt with other girls, and I'm not, I'm fine with that, but it, I think flirting's fine, but there seemed to be intent behind it, and whenever I tried to talk to him about it, he got really, really mean. Mm. He's the type of guy that calls names, you know? And this is not something I was raised to deal with, she says, casting a look at her mom. I don't put up with that. So I try to leave and then whenever I try to leave he'd do something really he'd do something to make me laugh and then I kind of forget about it you know yeah I've been there too it was pretty funny like he used to he was working on this this wand of polymorph so he would <laughs> turn himself into a chicken and it's a real dick though. And just one time he tried it again and I just You know, sometimes enough is enough. I've got more self-respect than that and I don't know, you just kinda notice that sometimes you think you like someone and then it turns out they're really boring. The fucking list? Yeah. Anyway, I I grabbed all my stuff and I left. And that was that was last night in the middle of the night. I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I'm thinking of actually going. Um, I'm thinking of actually going back to school. Oh, that's smart. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I insight this to kind of see like is she spinning a tail Go ahead or is she like? Roll. Does it seem yeah, really like, legit? the same? But it seems pretty genuine at a glance. Yeah. Uh, 24. 24. She is absolutely being honest. She has no reason to lie to you. Um, and she's really trying to think about the school thing. She's like, yeah, I'm actually I'm something of an artist. I do a lot of the, the, the posters and, and stuff for my dad's work. Have some stuff. Do you want to, do you want to see some art? I mean, I know you're. Yeah, totally. Uh, as but, that yeah, happens, she reaches down, pulls out a tome of a, a sketchbook, actually, more than anything out of her backpack. And as she does, you'll hear. As the, a wand falls out onto the ground. I will look at it underneath. Can I try to pick it up? Yeah, you can totally pick it up. Okay, I'm going to grab it. Oh. Is this yours? <laughs> no, that's my ex's. I must have grabbed it when I was getting all my stuff. 
Oh. He'll probably come back for it sometime soon. Anyway. Um, you ooh. could deliver it to him if you I'm, like. Yeah. But you don't have to see him. That would be great. I don't actually ever sure. want to see him again. And at yeah, that we can totally take it back for you. At that point, um, the beer shows up. And all of you have a ooh. frosty mug put in front of you. And there is um, an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner service is ready. And a couple of people come out to you, of course, being the nobles first, and set down um, plates of potatoes and asparagus and all sorts of summer vegetables and fruit. And there in the center, they set down a giant domed lid. Uh, please, enjoy your meal. And they take it off, and you will see a roasted chicken in the center of your plate. Hmm. Does this chicken look... It's like roasted and fucking dead. Yeah. And plucked. Yep. Does it look about the same size as... Can I get everyone to make me a perception? Yes, please. Mm-hmm. Oh no, that's fucking oh, terrible. No. <gasps> terrible. Uh, 24. Um, oh, you bless. will all notice as the camera cuts to black that this chicken has a very distinctive heart-shaped tattoo on its ass. Hmm game <laughs> so that's going to be Cute. it for this session and uh, look if he'd only waited we totally got the wand yeah mm-hmm. like i was half expecting him to show up under the table or something and jump on and try and take it back mm. and if he uh, tried to do that i was gonna yank it and snap it now here's the question Just because he's being a dick <laughs> here's the question for you are you going to tell the family before they eat the chicken that tried to sneak in through the only other entrance, which was which was the kitchen? Are they going to ex- tell them who the I chicken mean, is? I mean, I don't know if Cheesy noticed. I think Corlin would have to say something. I think Galatea would probably point out the tattoo. <laughs> okay. So, I, uh, it's your... That's it, the thing is, I think Corlin would kind of be like, I don't want to tell her that she got her ex killed by accident. So... <laughs> Two, two things. Mm-hmm. So maybe two options going forward for the plot. Um, do you just kind of pretend nothing happened? Or do you try to go out of your way to get the guy resurrected? Or reincarnated? Hmm. I'm going to pocket that wand. Okay. Uh, the, wa- <laughs> the wand is a wand of true polymorph. Uh, it has uh, a total of six charges available in it. I'm not going to tell you how many charges are there. Um, it regenerates uh, one charge every certain amount of time. You'll have to go have someone who knows about magic. Uh, it is a modified one. Most polymorph does not last forever, especially not if you're cooked. You know what? This might be a really good lesson for a certain pompous wizard who could then owe us a massive favor. So if Cheesy does catch on to the situation, mm. I think she'll yeah, be pushing for you resurrection. You know what? That does make sense. In I'll kind of... mockery. Oh, wait, 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 okay. And so, I will just be like, look, I'm a blunt person. Let me just lay this all out for you. And then like, <laughs> no, no hard feelings. We didn't try and do anything. Nothing. Okay. So this we'll... dick hired us, yada, yada, yada. He was a complete dick. We came, we started talking to people. It sounds like you were a lovely lady who just got the short end of the stick. So we were going to see if we could maybe get the wand back from you, which turns out you did it by accident. We were going to take it back anyways. Apparently he didn't trust us though. Because that's right. him. So, um... Well, what? Maybe we should res him. So that's, you, That seems a little tough. <laughs> I don't think that you have enough money, or he has enough money, to get a true resurrection spell given that many of his body parts have been thrown away. Mm-hmm. So you'll have to do a reincarnation, which immediately rebor- re- uh, he um, forms an adult body and calls the soul to enter that body. Okay? Okay. So okay. I'm going to roll to find out what he comes back as. Ready? Yep. No, but yes. I mean, I will totally leave the merchant's family to have like a say in this. All right. I'm guessing she's going to be horribly, like horribly horrified. Um, it is what it is. Um, let's see. So, oh, do we want to take that roll? Do we want to just take the roll? 
Just take the roll. Okay. Um, he is going to be resurrected as a rock gnome. <laughs> All right. So I punch him in the face. All right. Okay. So that's what's going to happen. Comes back as a rock new. Because we ended up making more money than we were going to get from him anyway. That's true. So. You made quite a bit of money. And um, a- after he begrudgingly gets beaten up upon resurrection, um, uh, is going to pay you the 175 gold that he owes you. And you will be given a free ride to the next town that you're traveling to uh, by the merchant's Ooh. family. Sweet. And with that, we, ha- we made friends. You made friends with, with the Myerskoffs. Nice. They're nice guys. They seem like nice, rich people. Oh, they're, yeah. they're bootstrappers. <laughs> I cool. know what he got resurrected back as. I was just going to punch him in the face. Oh, that's like, good. Was... It was either that or a half elf. I was like, eh. So that's going to be. He doesn't deserve to be elven anymore. That's he was yeah. proud of So that. he deserves to be a he's rock not cool no, enough anymore. No, it's just it's so different that he's going to see it poorly. So that is. Justice yeah, for that's him. Yeah, that's why I'm like, no, that's why I'm just... <laughs> All right. So, that's going to be it for today's episode of It's Always Magical in Pandelia. Thank you so much for tuning in, for, for watching, uh, and from all of us, we will see you in the next videos, dorks. Bye, everybody! Bye! Bye. Wee! We did it! We did another episode. Bye. All right, I'm going to go take a nap. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs>